Yeah, so back keeping the ball in the yeah. game. Yeah. After he's man of the match for yeah. Welcome I was on back. fire last week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a clinic. Man, it, it was, was a, great, a, great, a great performance. Always miss it was a brown sauce and the ketchup, and it was uh, no, nah, it was good sauce. It was a good, uh, it was a good session. I went him, put my B license gear on, and just <laughs> FaceTime you, didn't you? Yeah, FaceTime you. <laughs> 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 what was Kenny doing again? It was strange. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, but that's Andy now replaced. Didn't it? You'll be back. It was great. It was what you told me this morning, that went, didn't you? He's done great. He's upset when I'm bad weekend for him. He loves it. He loves for it. Loves for it. We were out with him yesterday for his birthday, cut a pint, didn't we? Couple. Just great the full day, didn't he? Even Just tears the full 30 day. 30 day. 30 was 35 minutes. 35 minutes. You had the hair all gelled in there. I kept saying, I want Gordon Duncan out, wasn't it? Gordon, Gordon Smith? Duncan? No, who's the guy? I had uh, the guy on. Aye, I want him Gordon, Duncan. Duncan. Gordon Smith as well, wasn't it? He was at <laughs> Top Tactics. But he was texting Hugh Keevens all day. It was strange, wasn't it? Picture <laughs> messages. Aye, in the toilet. <laughs> Hugh, Hugh, Hugh got a happy birthday tattooed on his chest. Set it down there. Oh, but here, mate, I'm rough. First time drinking for a while, mate. Oh, mate. I'm not I'm no really, I don't really drink. I don't, it's no major, I mean, but oof, too much. You look rough, lad. I know, hey, shoddy. It's, it's a bit shaggy. It's all over the place. Mate, you've been doing that. Are you saying that yesterday? How about a Gucci was doing that? Gucci on, was it? Gucci on, yes. What, return, though? Tag on it as well, so just to let people know it's no fake. I mean, you But there was a <laughs> smell of it, mate. God, it was rotten. It was rotten. It was reeking. It really, really was, but I've got a fear, mate. Oof. What about this at the weekend as well? My boy played Kev's boy at Fitmo. Can you believe that? just saying, aye. Done him. Done them 2 1. 2 1. one. Both scored. Both scored. Both notched. Both on the sheet. Jude, apparently, and this is coming for Lynn, the goalie, obviously, respected, the, uh-huh. respected opinion in the world of football, said that Jude's goal was unbelievable. Mate, he's went for a curly toe, right? He was Stephen Craig and mate, couldn't have kicked the ball straight. No. And now he's on us. Big Elvis curly toe. But he's, he's taking on Craig. Well, he right. tries to play offside in front fours and all that, Jude. <laughs> front fours. That front fours. How would they learn it in front fours? Front fours, no goalies. Front four? Fun no, force. No, four v four and they goal is. I bet they put a goalkeeper on goals and they can score. It's like fucking, it's like squid game, man. They're just down on the boot. See, as soon as somebody even looks to be going back onto the goal and the opp- opposition's coach is like, nee goal is. Cheating. <laughs> Stop cheating. <laughs> Stop cheating. <laughs> Take it so serious. You got, you got a boy, play? Me boy, he doesn't play though. He's got to go on it in Australia, but he's no, uh, no mad for it yet. What age? Eight. Ah, oh, still plenty of yeah, time. Plenty of time, man. Still plenty of time. Surprise me how can some, some parents push their kids to, to want to play football. It just comes to them naturally Let them be. if they want it, aye. Let them be, enjoy it. Mm. Be a kid. But the gold that comes out of that myth, and you're, you think your boy would soak that in, eh? Well, it, it, it just doesn't listen. It nah. doesn't listen, but we'll, we'll, we'll coach him soon. Ah, we'll he's eight soon. years old, man. Can you, are you going to be a manager soon? Yeah. Well, are, you, well, are, you, are you waiting for it? No, nah, you know, like, it's, it's what roles available. You know, there's mm-hmm. that many people in football now looking for jobs, looking for roles. Uh, I don't think you can say you want I want a manager's right. job or I want this job. I'll just wait and see what's up. Yeah. Well, see obviously, he's like to be a manager, right? And I think Simon would probably want to do that as well when he finishes football. I thought about it and I found it a difficult path. Um, Slaney, obviously, is coaching. Wow, see when jobs, obviously, Peter Grant's left the firm. I've got to say that yeah. this is... I'm going to say it. Let's get him in. No, I'm right. just saying there's like certain roles do you look at or is it a point in Scottish football where you think you've just got to take any role? Do you know, do you know, do you know what I mean? I like, know, I know 100% question. you know what you mean because... There's things that will just not fit, Aye. you know. But there, like, but again, there is so many people who will be looking for the jobs, whether it be this job, that job, whatever. There maybe comes a point where you think maybe you just need to do take like mm-hmm. jump in two feet. It might know hundred percent. Listen, it's never going to be probably a hundred percent right. Yeah. So you maybe just need to take the opportunity and back yourself. But I, there is certain jobs you look at and think that's a good one. Underperforming, good squad, yep. good size of club. We've got a bit of fine, a, a, a decent bit of finances. Aye, the the potential there is to 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 be better than what, what's happening right now. So it's a it's one of the jobs where it's, you get a job like maybe somebody's struggling at the bottom of the the, the second division, yeah. And you think, what can I actually do with them? Where can yeah. I take them? But then you think, if it's, I keep them up, do I get an, another move? Yeah. So it, it, there's all the thing about the jobs as well. Like you look at, if we just talked about Tomo, Tomo, Tomo yeah. goes into Kelty. Uh, they've got a bit of back in. You look at their team. Their team. I mean, he's doing a great job. Wonderful job. He's kind of oh, honed man. his skills at Rangers. 18s, 16s, 18s, 20s. I think he's worked his way through there. And now he's obviously managing Kelty. But he's got a good squad. Mm-hmm. You know, he's managed to recruit good players because of probably who he is as well. He's sold the project to them. And I know he won't make touch wood for them, but they'll go up. Yeah, I think they'll so. go up this year. Yeah. They'll win the league. Uh, covering a fantastic run at the moment, but that's a good job, you know. Yeah. Yep. At that level, though, there's no many teams that'll probably have that type of back and thing. So mm. that is a level play yes. goal, a wee bit. So you're kind of going in and you're backing yourself at that stage, you know. Can you get the response out of the players? It's like it's like they've done firmly one at the moment. Whitaker's I know Dozer. He's old, Andy's mate. Whitaker's there. He's 
uh, 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 the coaching staff in it. Chris is there. Shields yeah. there. Greg Shields, Shields is there. Yeah. Uh, obviously, like I know Dozer. I know mm-hmm. Dozer who signed for them. When I seen Dozer sign there, I, right. I, I looked at them and I took an interest in them because we had Dozer in Australia last year. And he came back, signed for Dunfermline. And I thought, oh, looked at their squad and they'll be up there. Mm-hmm. They'll be right up there. I mean, a boy signed who I played with Partick was the other boy, Reese Cole. Signed uh, Andy Cole's boy, eh? Yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he's, uh, he signed there and he's, he, I played with Partick. He came on loan from Brentford. Really, really good player. I thought they'll, they'll be right up there. And yeah. look at boys, Dom Thomases, Ryan Dowes, Craig Whitens, Ken O'Hara's. Good players. Uh, yeah, good good players. players. The boy Conley, I always like, always Conley. Ah, I always like Conley. Johnson, Johnson, yeah. Right back, you know, I remember playing against him. Kenny, you, you, you get just your job to it's low, uh, League One. Are you going to go and play? Aye. Are you? I'll try, aye. No, no. I did Kenny. Absolutely. Get his suit on at the side, mate. No, play! It means play oh, out to the back and... Oh, right, I thought you meant him play. <laughs> no, I don't play that. No, I, don't want, I could play. I could, could play. You could still play. Ah, easy. Easy. Could you? easy. Absolutely easy. Not a problem. No a problem game. there. Not a problem. It's... Uh, no, nice. definitely try and play. Would no, you mean, Definitely aye? try and play, aye. It's... Uh, again, to, to what Kev said, it probably... You do need to have the players uh, to do it. But I do believe that coaching and repetition and continually working on set patterns, players knowing their jobs, the options that are available to them. You know, I think it's any player can pass the ball 10, 15 yards, or they should be able to, mm. or they shouldn't be playing the game. It's more about making the decisions of when to do it and what, what option to take. That's probably right. what you have to. Have you got a work call? Super and hard are you ready to go? Or have you got a. You know what? I've no, to be honest, I've no. It's one of the things that it's, you kind of get in front of people and you, again, I've not had too much experience with it. But I think when you're in front of people, you can k- kind of suss out what they want. Uh, you know, ultimately, it's like yeah, it's, like, it's about a connection. If I sit in front of you and we talk football, and you're my, you're a chairman or a, a director of football, and we connect and we're on the same page, you're going to have a better chance. It doesn't matter what you put on the screen. Mm. If you have that connection and you, you've got maybe same thoughts Thanks. about how you want to move it forward, then I think you've got a, you've got a chance. You did an interview. Terrible. No, you'd be. You would just talk the year after, wouldn't you? <laughs> when you yeah, 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 he'd be asking any more questions. Just talk them in. Maybe that's a good thing as well. No, asking no, questions. Question. Aye. No, no, no asking, asking questions, questions as well. Because yeah, yeah. it needs to be right. You know, he said that to us, didn't he? It needs to be right to the back. He thinks that's why he got the job. He said that a lot of other managers would have went and just sat and listened to the chairman. He said, yeah. bad questions for the chairman. No sometimes, when you're, sometimes when you're being interviewed for any job or any role, if you're able to ask questions, you're putting him on the spot. And if he's not got the information to come back, you know what it you is. You think to yourself, wait a minute, he's probably knows a bit more than I do here. Well, you know what it is. It's actually no even. A, it's about finding everybody. Every single good top elite coach that we've had on the pro license has said the exact same things that it needs to be the right fit. Mm-hmm. And the only way you can find out if it's the right fit is by asking questions. Yes. So what, again, I can sit. Oh, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to play. This is what we, we, we see it. What if they didn't want that? Yeah. What if they want the opposite? So it needs to match up. So you need to know that, by the way, they might think, well, that sounds great, by the way. I didn't really want that, but maybe I do. At that point, it's probably no, still not going to work. Mm. It needs to be aligned, you know? It needs to be, I think it was, it was Mourinho that used the term shared vision when he was on the thing. Shared I'm vision. I love that, mate. Shared vision. Got him early, it needs oh, to be hard. Him in the early doors. <laughs> <He's like that. laughs> it needs to Tall be. Telly, it? <laughs> it needs to be aligned from top to bottom. Yeah, you yeah. know, it needs to be. And there's no point in a coach or a manager what to do certain things if the club are not going to buy it. We are in the league. Eston Fairman sitting <laughs> bottom. Is that a joint? So how far <laughs> are we talking points wise to They're not far like, off. potential? They're still Aye. So if you're going in there and uh, and and you're sitting in an interview. The chairman, you say, the chairman says, what, what's the objective? The objective is obviously to try and get promoted. No, I'd say this year could stay up. This year, yeah. this, this year, listen, they're 15 points off playoffs. Yeah. Or 15 off playoffs. So it's that, right, okay, I'm thinking maybe six, six points, nine points, you've got a chance. Still but a you know 15's what? a big ass. N- nothing's impossible, you know, mm. nothing. But it's, it's a big, big ass at 15. Because, by the way, there's some good teams at the top of that league. Yeah. Kilmarnock, you would have fancy Kilmarnock to go up straight Rafe away. Decent. You know, Wraith are strumming again. John McGundy and brilliant there. I watched them. I actually went to watch them. John phoned me, asked when I was, I'd left party just before I went to Australia to see if I wanted to go and finish off the season. That was the season that got cut short with COVID. They were top of the league, they were in League One going for the league. So I went and watched them and bye, they played some stuff. Yeah, they did. They good did coach, play. well, good, re- clear, clear plan about obviously how he wants to play. Really, really good. And you've said if you get a job, you'll get the same specs as my God. No, I don't need specs. I'm saying 2020, I mean, I'm saying everything <laughs> clear. <laughs> but part of the film and job is that you need to go and stay with Jim Leishman in a one-bedroom flat for the first six months yeah. just to get to the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like they still do that. It's good they still do that, innit? Get them in. I really do. Would you, would you, um, would you play? Is it if you were a... A manager, would you get your team to play in the lower leagues? He'd go two up, but he'd two up, two up, two up, two up, up. wingers. No, I, I don't know if I got two up 
I think you know, I'll, I'll, only way you go to up if you if you're one no say bigger guy target man if your bigger guy to up had something about him a bit clever. That's how that. You, I, I don't like the. I don't like the long ball to somebody who's not got a fucking clue what they're doing with. Mm. I like a long ball with somebody. What that if you had? Do, what, what if we had right? So you say would you go two up right? What if you had two strikers that were unbelievable? I'd go three five. If I'm playing two up, I'm going three five. Are you say? I like. I always like to have. Look three at in the Chelsea, did not they? Chelsea brought it. But I, I always like, like two up at times. As I well. like having somebody a, 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 a target to hit, and people playing after them, but knowing when to come in and play after them, mm. so that. For example, when we had me at Hearts and we had Tim, David Templeton on one wing and Stephen Elliott on the other and Rudy Scratch on making midfield runs. Oh, it used to, it, used to, it, it was like control, no, no long passes, it was direct, controlled the long passes. So if it came to me short, I could pretend going long, come and get the chest and late after Rudy, Rudy would then maybe slip in like a Stephen Elliott running behind or David Templeton. And sometimes they might come short and caught to me in the head and I could see Rudy making that run behind and I'd just flick it on. Mm. There's all sorts of different options, but again, it comes down to personnel. You get to that Dunfermline squad, you look at me, you think you're saying guys like Tam Aware and that and, and other players, no Tam Aware, the, 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 the guys, Thomas. these guys can play football. Yeah, yeah, they're good players. So you're going in there and thinking, right, okay, what do I need to change? I just need to get them, like Kenny says, repetition, knowing when to do it. Because every footballer can pass the ball. Like you say, it's just getting them comfortable to do it all the time. Don't get um, nervous when things aren't uh, going your way. Everybody. Keep trying to do them. And knowing that if you make a mistake, let's get back in, get my shape right and make things move. I just Everybody needs confidence. confidence. Yeah. Everyone needs confidence as well. Yeah. You know, and they're, and they're, and they're clearly like management it, comes in your process. process. Yeah. You know, it's, it's more, it's more uh, nowadays for me, tactically, everybody needs to be right. I think we talked about last week. You need to deal with the people. You know, mm. you need to deal with the, with, the, with the humans that are right in front of you. What work out what makes them tick, get them going. Clearly, there's something. Maybe Peter's a good coach. Yeah. Really, really good coach. I've played against his Aloha team and the absolute Top past us off the pitch. You know, but it's, there's been something missing for whether it be training ground to pitch or something just going for, 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 for coach to player that the, the response is just not being there. Like, that group's better than what it's shown, yes. you know. That's why I asked about it yesterday. Clearly, it's a, it's a job that so many people will be interested yeah. in. But for everything we've talked about, the size of the club, the, the potential with the squad, probably maybe only really got the... Was one way to go, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Did they not start the season in Fermi with an opening game result like four 0 or something? No, I've no one again. No, no one again. Did no one again? Just going to ask if you had that quote on for you two that often. Last two weeks, you just wore it the full week. I swear, God, I actually felt last night. It was out with the kids with the Halloween with the guys and that, and it was Baltic. Uh, it's cold. Uh, Stop to get cold. So I just thought I put the big. How are the big pumpkins in the boots? Mate, the kids are getting a, a horrendous amount of sweets. Nah, I, I can see I put a couple of stone on the next couple of weeks. So I can ask a question. Of course you can. What's the, what, what's the, I want you to tell me a time in your career you had a big argument with the manager. Can you remember what? The one? Canoe, uh, Was it? Early doors. In the dressing room for it, have uh, Was it? Uh, <coughs> Why? Because I was fat as fuck when he came in. Right. And he says, you're not, you, you do not represent me. I kind of put you on the pitch and say. What, in front of you? He said that? To everyone, uh, So for the first six weeks, mate, I never played. I wasn't allowed to eat the same as anyone else. So then I got myself in good nick. Me and the fitness coach would go away every day. Run, run, run. Got myself in good nick. Played a, a friendly, done really well. And then we played Burnley in the pre-season friendly before the season starts. So this is the last friendly. She's like, you're on the bench, you've done really well, but you're on the bench. Obviously, you'll play your part. So I mean, I guess about 18 minutes, right? And I'm looking next to me and every comes went on and I'm sitting there, I'm in. And a, a young boy sitting next to me who plays my position. So about five minutes ago, he goes like, I had a young boy. Louie, get ready, you're going on. And I was like, nah, he's winding me up here, isn't he? So I mean, it gets to eight to nine minutes in the... Last pre-season game, he's like, Simon, go warm up, you're going to go. I was like, nah, I'm not going on. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh, yeah. Nah, no going on. And he's like, what? So me and him are pure arguing in the dugout. Then I go on, comes in after the game, mate, and he's like, no, you are done with me. It takes a fucking miracle. And I was like, you're treating me like a prick. Ah. I'm, I'm not playing for you, no playing for you. So mate, I was out. See, for the first five games of the league season, never played, but then he lost four in a row. And he's like, ah, fat boy, come here tomorrow. I need you, you need to play. <laughs> but did you, so see the time you have after the argument, see the weeks, never spoke to me. But did you just- I was trying to get out. Did you switch half though? Nah, I was still, you couldn't have him, mate, because he'd be on you, right. but it's like, I had to imagine, get me out of here. Get That's me out here. I couldn't get his out and then went and played every game after that. You must have had a few, Ken. You've obviously you know, had a few like, honestly, managers. You know, honestly, I've been a cup, man. I've been, I'm 30 plus, I counted up one day, I've 30 plus managers. Have you, Have you? Uh, wow. And it's, like, I've actually not really had too many bus stops with managers, I'll be yeah. honest, like with disagreements, I but things like that, no, no so much. Uh, I can't actually think of any. I had a, one when I was at Derby, uh, 
Paul Jewell Paul had Jewell. taken over. No, but he had taken over from uh, wee Billy, wee Billy oh, Davis. Davis yeah. wee Billy signed me down there, and Billy I think he left after about six weeks. And something had happened, but I don't know if it was at the game or at the end of the game. And he brought Stan Turner in as his assistant. Stan was oh, at Burnley. That's amazing. Stan Turner, yeah. Stan Turner, yeah. Burnley. Stan Turner oh, came cool. in. And he had a big grey fucking eyebrow. Uh, <laughs> Could you see? Is that his? Uh, he had. Uh, I, I can't honestly. I can't even remember what it was about now. But he had said something, and then I said something to him, and then it escalated, and it ended up he was coming. I think Stan had actually been in a wee bit of baller a few years back because I think he, he was in fighting with someone, aye, like aye. a player or something. If I remember rightly, so he was he was up for it. Uh, I had to be up for it. So what, Stan Terry and Joe no, no, were coming for it. No, no, just just, just Stan. Stan so the two again, but then the guy, the gaffer, got in between Stan, and then the couple of the players obviously jumped in and got in be, between me. But you know, I can't even remember what it was about. But it literally became a you're not doing that. You're, I'm, I'm not doing that. You're not doing fucking this. <laughs> you're fucking no. And it just oh, ended up escalating. But honestly, managers, no, because I did actually whether it was felt things were right or wrong or had a view on, on what should be done. It's not my job as a player, yeah. you know, it was the gaffer's job and always respected. I did, despite anything that's been written or no written, always respected the position of the manager, you know, because it's a hard job. They're paid to make decisions, whether they're right or wrong, that's not for me to say, yeah. you know. There's no way you ever had to go back at that. No, I've never, never. Accepted it. <laughs> Even if they're on the rank. Accepted it. I'm wondering what a question that was. See, that used to be, I just turned it into that. Then. What about... Managers know where you're about with somebody else involved in your team, what's the biggest you've seen? Oh, that's a good question. Remember the canyon fought Leon Clark? That was I played oh, Leon Clark. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Leon's like that. Every time the gaff we'd all be like that with the gaffer spot, yeah, 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 yeah. Nodding dogs. Every time the gaffer spot Leon's like that. <laughs> That is brilliant. Everything's about anger with you. <laughs> That's what Leon says to the canyon. The canyon get mate. And they are, I mean, I'm is Irish? Like, Leon's not Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking a full fight in the tunnel, man. And then the canyon starts hearing doing the. Was he a fighter, the canyon? Nah, mate. He could fight like fuck. You love that MMA, mate. Not. But at Swindon, mate, you could run down the dressing room, back out on the pitch, and. Mate, and it was like wacky races, mate. The canyon was chasing him for about 30 minutes, man. And we were all watching it. And he said, I fucking kill you, Leon. And Leon sprinting away through the gaffer, mate. Unbelievable. Mick McCarthy, Gary Green. Wild, man. We played for Wills. I was on known at Wills one night. And something happened. I think, to be fair, Breeny, Breeny was always a great one for blaming everybody else when things were only going right. I thought, fucking take a look at your performance sometimes. That's how I, I used to see him sometimes. A good big player, great guy. And he came in and he was the captain. And Mick McCarthy went through him, and I swear, Sylvan Ebanks Blake, he had to hold Mick McCarthy back. McCarthy had his fucking fist curled, ready to go, and Brady's just sitting there going, You're just a fucking coward. You're a coward. <laughs> You're just a fucking coward. You're just a coward. And Mick's going, You up? You up? You know, the big, big Mick's fucking going back and forth, and Blake's, No, no, I don't. And I honestly, I, I, that's the first one I actually thought they're actually going to kill each other. Yeah, there's always boys in the team that went there and you're like, please and shut up. Back. Just shut up. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, mate, you can't keep going with this. <laughs> Leon Clark was like that, man. Man, you're like, Leon was like that. Uh -huh. Leon, a good player. He was like that as a boy at Wolves. Came through at Wolves when I was, I was uh, at Wolves and he was always like that. Always, always. Thought again, he came in, played a few games and then if he wasn't playing, he'd be raging, you know. <laughs> was he doing was, that? Uh, uh, Aiden would always say something back, wouldn't he? Aiden was funny, man. Aiden funny. Man. Aiden, funny. Again, he, he, you know what it is? He just, if he felt something wasn't right, it's maybe similar to what I'd say, is if he felt something wasn't, wasn't right, he never, even at 18, when it was just coming through, he just, he just felt he needed to say, no, yeah. that's not right. So what's happening? It's not right. Uh, I just don't agree with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Extra. laughs> oh, so the only time he's just all out be bickering and arguing with each other. Uh, and then he hit, do you remember he hit Jim Blythe with a boot? Who did? He didn't oh, kick the boot and I hit Jim Blunt. Jim Blunt was going to Jim Blunt's like that, isn't he? Oh, he's a big boy. <laughs> and he just flung up, flung about, and it's hit him, man, and Jim was going to kill him. I think even then he was like, ah, shut up. <laughs> big Jim was, it was him and Boric, wasn't he? He took Boric on, mate. For a way. See, for Aiden, like being a no, wee guy, because he's a bit of. Ah, he's but he, mate, oh. he, he would have a go at anyone, man. Fiery, wee boy, fiery, yeah. Really fiery. Who <laughs> else was like that? Anyone else, eh? He played with Scott McDonald. Why? Scotty only like briefly, that, yeah. briefly. Was we like had Scotty, we took Swiss sign Scotty in Australia last year. I did, For the last that? seven games of the season, I It was, uh, came, came out of Brisbane. And uh, we probably needed something up front at the time. So I'd been speaking to him, I said, Gaffer, yeah, look, Scotty's got his veil. Six, seven games. Let's bring him in, what, what, what hand can it do? Came in, scored, they scored the winner in, in uh, Sydney Derby on his debut. I did. Came on, scored a header for a corner, 1-3-2. Good player, I think. Aye, so good, good, really good player. Really, really good player. That was brilliant. That's a good day, but uh, Grosvenor Sport. Sorry, Sam. You've just got the text and the new offer. A new offer, aye. Uh, if you go it. <laughs> bet £10. Pounds. £30 pound free bet. What a deal. 
Unbelievable. And oh, you got a coupon up for the weekend? Did I? Your man, you flush. The Leeds. Oh, the Leeds one. And the one I put on, we hear this bit, one 500 quid I had a tenner on Maguire, Shaw and Romero to be put. Romero get put in 93 minutes. Oh, Did you? That's unbelievable. I showed you. But you bet with Grosvenor, so it's treble. Grosvenor eyes were treble, it was a grand. 500. What are you going to spend on, bro? It's probably a Gucci track, isn't it? <laughs> Right, on the, oh, open goal 25, I don't think that counts anymore, so say it'll be Ovi. 85% possession, two be. shots on target, huh? fail to score. Have you ever, ever seen anything like that before? Uh, that's got to be some kind of record, 85%, like, I don't know, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's a horrific result for, for Celtic, yeah. isn't it? But 85%, I don't know. What can a manager actually do if you've got 85% possession to it? It's up to the players to then go and finish it off now. But Livingston's game plan all week, would they be happy with Celtic to have all the bother about the... Mm. By the way, they're, they're happy with having the ball, so like, but how? I've never seen that. Like, it's you, it's 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 like, you see, like, you striker for every day up front. He'd be better just putting the first. The other striker, the other no, striker. I, 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 I think they had actually had literally everybody in the rain box. Eighty-five yeah. percent. You played a goal up front, didn't you? Aye. Set a half up front. <laughs> but, but it's no. I'm I'm watching this. Right, it's no pointless possession. It's no say, like last year just passing the ball about the back for the sake of the attacking for eighty five. Why is it? Why is there high? Fair what I've seen on the highlights. Mm. Isn't it? I've spoke to a few people at the game and said it was awful. I oh, did, didn't I? Right? A few fans said it was awful. Like, listen, I don't know. But what, what, what was high. awful? That's the thing. What was the, the result? Aye, it's awful. awful. I, you, you know, they were saying there was a lot of sideway passing. Oh, is there? Right? Uh, aye, a lot of side. But then again, I was asking. Sometimes when a team is so deep, it is hard to. I need to try and drill. But my, the. the, the the issue is, and I don't, I don't get it. And I, I, he must have had a knock or, or something training with Kyogo because he did, Ange doesn't rest players. He yeah. hasn't since he's came in, and it, every game he doesn't play. Celtic are a completely different team. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I think Rogic is a big miss for him. Ah, he's yeah. massive. I think he's Especially in games like Kenny, where yeah, he, he, he can't can open some yeah. yeah, he's a. I think he's been a. I mean, Kyogo gets a lot of credit because he's goals from it. See, when you're watching, he doesn't do much within the game. You know, he plays on that Movement's last line. Good, yeah. good movement. Good he's always a goal team, threat. Rogic. For me, since he's come into the team, I th- like back into the into the fold this year, he's been he's been incredible because the way he receives the ball, he's all he just it's so easy for him. And if the player's time. there, he seems to take it there. If the players, he just knows where the pressure is. Yeah. He keeps the ball safe. He's a big boy as well, by so if you're trying to nibble at him, he can easily roll yeah. you. And next minute, he's at he's at a back line, and he's got the the ability, the guy to play the pass, score goals as well. I thought, he's, I thought he would have been a big miss and trying to open up a, a real deep defence. I mean, the, the, <laughs> st- the stats there, Kev, I mean, obviously 85, but I, I'm not interested in the possession no. stat 85. I'm interested in shots and goal on target. And what was it? Two, two, shots. two shots on target. That's not good enough. You're not going, and well, was, that's not a manager, is it? No, but what I'm saying you're is... Getting, no, no, it's it's his job to get you into the areas. 100%. And, uh, oh, that's on the team. But the... I mean, two shots, one for a penalty. You're, you're not going to win a game of football if you don't have, have mere shots on target. Mm. And they need to get that. I mean... Again, that's why I, I said a couple of weeks ago I didn't think Celtic could I win the league because mm-hmm. when it one comes out a comes big out player, the, yeah. there's no one other one to go. Yes. I mean, Rangers have got it. You know, Kent doesn't play. He puts a cow and he gets a hat trick. Celtic have not got that that level of squad, and that's why I think they'll be shot. But it was strange because I mean it's almost the same performance as the, the game at Livingston, a home game. Man, very similar to that game, yeah. Livingston. That's where maybe they need to have a look at when they play that that opposition. Yeah, yeah. Maybe something needs to be done differently yeah. because <coughs> you keep just banging your head against the brick wall. I mean, by the way, Livingston would get a bit of stick. Oh, it's anti foot. No, no. They're not going there no, to Celtic Park to just say, I'll tell you what, Celtic. Yeah. Go and play they want to play and beat us 5 0. They're there to get something out of that game, first and foremost. And they've got, when, they, when the whistle goes, they've got a 0 0. They've got a point. They've got that to hold on to. Yeah. It's their job to go, Celtic's job to go and break that down and take that point away for them. And to be fair to Livingston, it's something they've been very, very good at. <laughs> and against Celtic, they, they have done well. They have done well against Celtic in their time since they came to the Premier League in regards to getting points. There's been odd win here or there. It's, uh, no, it's, it's not I think Celtic's answer. only beaten them like four times in the 12 games or something. Can okay, you seen that situation if a team, even if you play, seen a team are, are sitting back that much and you're saying if, you, if you're watching, what, what, what can you do different? Is it moving it quicker or? No, I, 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 I sometimes look at things like that and think Celtic didn't um, change anything. They didn't mix it up. It was mm-hmm. the same. It, was, like, it became pedestrian where you thought, right, they're going side to side along the back four. Then they're going to try and slip one and they're going to try and get their full back soon and get some... Sometimes you maybe just go a wee bit more direct and put things under pressure. Sometimes change it, like totally change it up. I, but Celtic don't have the personnel to come yeah. on to do, to do that. Whereas you think with that big striker up, I know. But the big striker, Jim Marcus, he's obviously come into the club and he's always he's missed the penalty, which is a poor penalty. The keeper goes our way, that goes in, and, and everyone's fine. But even after that, the ninety fourth minute, a striker on form 
at the top of his game, when that ball comes across, he reacts better and puts that in an empty net. That, that's what happens. But he's not quite hit the ground running yet. But Celtic do need more options. And I think that, I think. But when Kyogo plays, Kev, teams know that there's nobody's going to run behind. Yeah. But when they're sitting that deep, yeah, Kyogo's not going to be allowed to run behind because they're too deep. There's no space in behind. No, but he's good. Even when Moving they do it. sit in, it's the wee ones, the wee runs yeah. he makes ah, yeah, the, the, the gaps. Whereas Jay Kamakis, when I watch him, yes. he very much comes to feet all the time, doesn't he? But you I, I don't know what it was. Who, Kyogo? Nah. Nah, there you nah, go. Play. I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't, I've, it's one of the great mysteries of me when I, when I watch football and, 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 and when teams sit in, how, how do you break that down? Well, you know what? We're, we'll be talking about it shortly. Rangers faced the exact same thing. Motherwell went 1-0 up and Motherwell had honestly 10 men, 20 yards for their goal, 25 yards for their goal. That's where, how do you break it down? You need to keep that, I mean, 85%. Celtic clearly did have that sustained pressure, but Rangers had it, but they moved it quick yeah. from side to side. They then freed up, and by the way, they maybe different, they put crosses into the box. box. That's, what I, that's what I was trying to get yeah. at. See, see, Andy Millen, who used to work at Elway, great coach, there's a lot of the, the, the licences, puts people through their badges. He always said the same thing. You make defenders defend, 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 and eventually a mistake will be made or the ball will just be on point. You look at the Tavernier cross, the cross come over right in between two centre-halves. Unbelievable. Celtic don't do enough of that But that me. must have been, that, that probably must have been their 15th, 16th Aye. cross of the half. Yep. So low averages, one's going to Gonna be the it, perfect yep. cross for the right run. But they don't only do crosses, whether it be Barisic, Bassey, Patterson or, or Tav, they're all good crossers of the ball yes. and they do it a lot it's, by the it's a big part of the game but what they have also got is particularly on the right hand side they've got a rebo on our field with Tav and then Wee Devo kind of gets across and gets involved in the combination bang 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 they cut through a rebo goes through yeah, with a good yeah. bit of play cutting through by one touch quick passing through and a rebo should score so the but Haribo's like well. Roger Kenny, he's like your Roger for really, really go by players as well it's you not know, just pass pass yeah. pass he can go and take somebody to the game and Rangers make the pitch big like the, the, the fullbacks stay proper wide, yep. the wingers stay proper wide, whereas sometimes I think when Celtic have all the possession and when you watch it on the highlights and stuff, everybody's condensed into that eight, the width of the 18 yard box. And to me, there's too many bodies. Mm. That was the one thing about Athlete Brendan's team that was really, really good. When they got in about the box, the quick combination yes. play was, it was hard it was to live with, you know, there was really, really good movement. There was clean play, whether it be McGregor, Rogic, their strikers, Edward, then Bailey's. Griffiths with his wee diagonal runs for and you've got you throw Forrest and Sinclairs into the into the mm. wider areas as well. They, they were so quick and sharp running about the box for that, that type of combination play to break these defences. Yeah. You know what? There could be three Celtic players with seven opposition players, but just with a bang, 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 they're, they're through and yeah. it's a cutback and it's a goal, you know. They were really good. Rangers done that really well yesterday. And it took obviously they get a man sent off and it ends up six. But that was how that's how Rangers done yeah. it. You need to be really, really good and clean and quick. Because even playing. during the week, Hibbs sat off set, like Hibbs done what Livingston done, but yep. Roger was the guy that could Aye, go by his it. direct opponent, yep. would drag somebody else out, and then it'd be a wee slip ball. When you didn't hear guys that can do that, it's quality it does end on up the just ball. going side to side. I think, no, he, he, I think in January will bring their players in. Oh, he needs to. Because 100%. I think a lot of players there isn't his type of player. Mm. Even like Soro McCarthy, I don't know if he, he, he likes that type of player. Mm. I don't know if it suits the way he wants to play. It's even quality. Peter, it's the He's quality and, and decision making in the final third sometimes let Celtic down when they caught against teams at Livingston. Well, he's been back. Yeah. But your man's back, James Forrest. That's oh, his yeah. favourite player. No, he's he's big loss. Big was he a young boy when you were there, Kenny? Did he tell me the first time? No, he's maybe a bit no, younger, isn't he? Bit young, aye. Yeah. A bit young. But he must be delighted. Oh. What a player, that's that new signing. If they can keep him fit, that is generally like a new signing because the boy I've had a listen, as a winger myself, so I know the game for that part of the, the I know it inside out. I know what it's like to play at a top club. That wee guy, I'm I'm unsure on. I'm unsure on him. I don't still know. Still only 19, I think. Young still boy, young shy, boy, but uh, I don't, it's, it, do you know what? He seems, he seems good. It, it, it reminds me of Pedro a lot. Do you know that? We Pedro with the we Pubita for Chelsea. Oh, I actually, yeah. Chelsea is it Barca? Yeah. No, he was he played at the top level, but he's not really somebody that I, I don't know if he does he beat players. I don't know anyway. But listen, James Forrest, that's that is absolutely massive. Yes. And the boy, Mickey as well, Mickey Johnson. Johnson, yeah. He's he he, he gets comes off seat side, doesn't he? That's yeah. the type of players. That's what Celtic have. I mean, you always think of that sell it with good wingers, and he fits that well. Perfect. Are you putting yourself into the good wingers? I'm involved with that 100%. That's why I signed this. Don't work out, bye. I'm move on, didn't we? So, if you're going to give me Abadai any sort of advice, what would it be? Try to stay away <laughs> with the touchline a bit too much, do you know what I mean? With the fans and that. Just relax yourself, Sai. Right, okay. I would move on for that. Uh, penalty, I need to ask is, is that a penalty? I don't get that. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know why it was a penalty. What, what, what was the penalty for? Was it for the, the slap? It no, why is it a slap? The penalty had not already been given. 
No, no. So it's for the slam. It's for the slam. For the slam. There you go. Well, they're out of jail. There was a chance to go out of jail. Yeah, yeah. And uh, never took it. But it's a red card, but I don't know if it's a penalty. Why? I mean, it's, it's a soft. Like it's not. It's not a slap uh, with yeah. aggression. You know, it was a wee like. Listen, you, uh, not, you, you do anything to get the win, anything. And listen, he has been hit, but I, I, I don't. Uh, uh, do we know the rule? I don't think well, you lift your hand there. Yes, but you kind of lift No, no, no. Obviously, you, the guy should be up. But, but is it, should it be a penalty? I think I, the rules I think there could be something going on yeah. that end of the pitch. And if I clock Sai in the box, then it can be brought ah, by as a penalty, right. I think. Mm. So, but I they, think get, so. they get an opportunity to get what themselves out of jail. Defender? And then I, 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 I was like, who missed it? Then the first thing I did was check live score to see if Juranovic was still on the park. And he was. And I'm mm. thinking, why is he not taking the penalty? I've just found it strange. Have you heard that Davey Martin's making the player day for punishment? He's making them wear the, the chinos that Davey wears on the side for a week. <laughs> <laughs> he said you could get the finders wear the chinos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you had surprised he took it? Aye. Bad penalty, wasn't it? Bad oh, penalty. So, so full of diarrhea, wasn't it? I can't understand why he probably took it because he's a striker. All strikers should be taking penalties. They should be comfortable enough for putting the ball in for 12 yards, but it was a bad, bad effort. And the boy, you've, he's been Scored lethal for the penalty score, hasn't he? He scored last Smooth week. That. Was there a reason that came out? Was it somebody said it was a designated penalty? I, I just said that, aye. Uh, I can see why, listen, as a strike coming you go to a new club, you, you want to get your confidence up, so penalties are going to help that, but you just imagine when the guy scored two. Yeah. Should be that. Have you ever went as a striker to a club and had a shaky start? Aye. <laughs> Celtic? Did it take yeah. you a while to score for Celtic? <laughs> you know, it took a while, aye. That was seven games, aye. Was that? Aye. Seven so games. Every game you went out to play, were you thinking about it? Or? Nah, not so much. Nah. Again, I've, I've always been pretty much with that kind of thing that I knew goals would come. I knew I was contributing anyway. I was contributing. Fine, goals never came, but I was contributing to the team, which and we're winning. So that was the Rangers went back to them. It took me a while. Was it four or five games? I think uh, it was. It was the fourth game of the season at Parkhead. My first goals. So, uh, aye, listen, sh shaky start depends what, if you're playing rubbish or not getting a game and you're not scoring yeah. different. I haven't scored in terms of that, but obviously you want to go off, off the mark, yeah. sharpish, but it never went that way. But it never, it's no something I would, I would say overly bothered me. And then see as soon as you get the first goal, does that go? Well, never happened when I was at Celtic. I never scored as many goals as I should have that year. Uh, Rangers, first year again, I never scored that many in the first year either, so no. <laughs> in a word, no. <laughs> but is that the way, it, but the way you play though? I don't know. See, Rangers right. obviously Boyd was mayor. No, listen, but when Rangers Boyd, he was at Boyd's guarantee minimum 25. You know, so if I could chip in between 15 and 20, which yeah. I did, uh, or if you, get, if you have a really good season and you get more than you've got a pair and it's getting 40 to 50 goals, it's, you've got a chance of winning the league. So, but Boyd is guaranteed 25, 30. So, uh, aye, it's different. You're different role. Obviously my role, me and Boyd were a good partnership. We're good. A good foil for each other, so but uh, you still you still want to score. Mm. You know, you still want to be scoring goals. You go out every week wanting to score. Uh, you, in reality, that's not going to happen. Huh? You yeah. were one of them to even up till you're forty when you scored the goal. It was like you was your, ah, your first ever nah, goal. Nah, nothing better. Nothing better. Mm -hmm. You know, I scored in my my second last was it my second last appearance. But I see my last appearance ever as a player was against Celtic as well in the cup for Partick. And I missed a chance. It came across oh, a slid in the back post. And it, it's one where you're sliding in, Kev. You know, like it's getting away for you. Ah, so you're you running there. to get there, and you're stretching. But and by the way, you're only two yards for the goal. Yeah. And I get there, and I actually got decent. It goes right high off the bar and comes back out. It's raging. Many just you your career. Two hundred and eighty-six. Wow. I think it finished at club and country. Ah, that's not yeah, bad. He could take it if he had. Oh. Okay, what about you? Yeah, shaky, oh. <laughs> shaky fail, mate. I, 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 I never struggled to score goals. See, like youth team reserves and that, no bother. But see, as soon as I hit that first team, I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sunderland, man, took me forever to score my first goal at Sunderland. Did it? Uh, I could imagine yeah, it affected you away. Were you missing setters, kid? No, I wasn't missing setters. I was I, I, hiding I, I, a lot. Of, I, I fucking playing hide and seek in the park the Saturday for them. Uh, there was a lot of time. I scored quite a lot of goals that get disallowed. I mean, I scored like a last minute equaliser against Newcastle so at the state of my life, and I got fucking disallowed. Oh. I'm being bombarded with the fans on top. I scored a fucking recall of all against Wigan in the Premiership, and it got disallowed. I was Should supposedly it a, I've never really looked back at it. We said I was offside. There was other games I scored, um, but the first proper full season with Sunderland, I scored probably enough for a target man. It was like 16 goals in the Championship, but for a target man, that was. Was decent and then. What uh, was your first goal, Kevin? Remember it? First goal, aye. Um, first league goal, mm -hmm. Darlington on loan, old second division, 
playing against somebody and I scored. That was the first one. That was you remember that? You always yeah. remember that first goal, first Premiership goal. Remember that fucking diagonal into Gary Breen free kick. Well, what free kick? We all run like near post, and then Gary kind of peels in the back. So he's headed one of the kind of headers coming back the way it came, and it's bending towards. And we, Stephen Elliott, fucking, you can see him like ready just to tap it in. And you've just I've just it. fucking jumped to the top with size twelve. <laughs> and I must, it must have been half in already. I've just made sure it was in, and that was like a great feeling. We lost that day, and then um, Scotland, fucking Scotland, I tried to score. I think I played like fourteen appearances for them, scored like five or six goals. So that was all right. Yeah. And then up, up to Kilmarnock, decent enough record. Hearts, one and two, 20 games, 10 goals. That was decent. Not and bad. then, but I fucking struggled with goals. I, I got to a point where Sunderland basically changed the way I played to become the guy that helped everybody else get goals. So mm. I then became less selfish, I think. But goal scoring is no fucking easy. I remember playing with, playing with Sunderland. David Moyes was manager of Everton. And I was up against a young, a younger David Weir and his pomp with Everton. And he was, he was brilliant. Mm. And I remember the ball came over the top and I'm fucking one-on-one -on -one with whoever it was in goals at the time ever, and I'm thinking, fucking hell, just take a touch, put it rid of and away you go. You start thinking, oh, fucking so. See when you're not like a confident goal scorer and then we Gary Naismith come in and nicked it away and then I've obviously dived down and tried to get a penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. fucking, you know what I mean? Did you, see when you're <laughs> exactly. did you ever get caught like, during the, the, you hear a, when you're like, a bad score and run around like, you're a fucking daddy kind of. Oh, I always, like, I think, ah, oh, loads of times, but you, you, you tried. Like, when well, I went to Coventry, and there was a, like, when I went to Coventry, I signed for like just under a million quid, and like, why are we signing him? And, and I was like, fuck. So, first game, we beat Holloway. Second game was my home debut against Leeds, and I scored on my debut, a uh, home debut against Leeds, and we won, and we won the first four or five games. I thought, like, fucking, that's a great signing. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the team starts playing bad, and the goals dry up, and things go the, the other way. And then you're the, you're the one to blame. You're the guy that's come in with bot. Yeah. You're the one, and, and that's just how it is. But it's tough. I certainly don't fucking miss those terrace and shouts. Uh, have you had? Have you ever had a shock at a club? Uh, it's no, no, it's no great. But my time at Celtic, I scored only scored eleven goals in that first year. But the team won the league, and won the cup. Yeah. Aye. Well, that's what it's about. You know, it's yes. not about one player scoring goals. And at some point, you played your part, right? Champions League, I scored three goals that, that year. That helped us get to the, the last Was it Ben Fiki scored Two Ben Fiki, one Copenhagen. Man. You know, so it's... Yeah. Aye, no, no, I wouldn't say shockers, but there's, they've not done as well as maybe what I could have at, at certain clubs. Cardiff, we only scored our, was 11 or 13 or scoring in Cardiff. And like, it was a good season we actually had, so it was 50 games I think we played. And uh, but we made the playoffs. It was big Malky's first year. And yeah. it was a club was in a bit of a turnaround. Malky done a brilliant job there. Got the playoff, got the Carling Cup final. What we'll beat with Liverpool and penalties in the Carling Cup Maybe final, you know? So, we had a decent year. So, again, personally, I know some good years at certain places. I mean, again, big disappointment for me was when I actually went to Dundee and we got relegated. Mm. You know, that was, that was disappointing. Uh, going to Partick and big Gary Caldwell got sacked after, after five, six games, and that's why I went there, really. Uh, it was disappointing. And again, I think when I left, I had 11 goals at the, in, in January. So, I, Team's not doing so well. Yeah. So again, there can be flip sides. Sometimes you can be doing all right personally, but the team's not doing well. Other times you're not doing that well, but the team's doing well. Yeah. You know? So it depends. I, I wouldn't say, I would say, no, no, had a shot. The managers, the managers come and say stuff as goals spoke about for managers. Aye, definitely. Yeah, I remember that uh, Coventry, Mickey Adams was like, You need to start scoring. Fucking, I brought you eight score goals. <laughs> you're not fucking scoring. <laughs> I says, Gaffer, I says, I'm, I says, I says, you're playing well enough. He says, they will come. They are. It's always the same. They will come. But they, never, they never have a fucking day. <laughs> I, 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 I played like 48 games. I caught me over the course of two or three years. And I think I scored like five goals. It was fucking oh. brutal. Like I had a like, tough time. Did you ever score a goal? Was, I, mean, I was just about to say, my finish was terrible. So was mine, mate. Wow. Terrible finish. I didn't actually know what I was doing yet. See, the worst Never knew whether it's a striker or a side fitter. The worst was when a cross came. <laughs> the worst was cr a cross came in at the back post. <laughs> just, oh, just, just fucking hits half you. I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to do with this. That was torture for See, when we done crossing and finishing, too. Um, crossing and finishing. Friday's just crossing and finishing. Gretel, you, I hated it, mate. Incredible. Hate it. <laughs> you crossing. Oh, crossing and finishing. That's both no you, terrible, mate. mate. That's not your game, is it? Oh, when I was at, when I went to Rangers, we we at the McCoy says you need to start scoring goals as well because I was always I was only coming on as a sub I was only a sub and then when I actually started games for Rangers I only started four times and I've scored three so that was all right I look at don't look at the ten minutes sub appearances Mister Day was shooting on a Friday with McCoy would would think I mean he would pop things in bottom corners and fucking do what he did 
And I said, oh, that's all very nice. I said, I can do the exact same abilities out of my head. Aye, okay. And then we used to do cross, and I used to fucking just head up everything into it. Yeah, like, uh, into the back. And it was like, fucking hell, man, that is. We need to cross the, arm, the ball more. And I said, I used to fucking do. But that was my thing. My thing was heading, getting the fucking boy at your feet and r- raking a 20 yard or into whatever. That just wasn't a. Yeah. I don't even remember, I, I went for a stage generally for about three years in a row where every shot I kicked the ground before the ball. Did you not know, work on it not to get mad at did in a final training, but she went into game, which I volleyed the ground, my ankle fucking was agony and the ball just rolled away and I'm like, oh man. Mate, about three years spelled That's it. horrible. Do you remember the striking one where on a Friday, you'd stand that side of the goal, I'd stand this side of the goal, I'd sprint out, you'd pass the ball up, and you need to fuck up, mate, I can <laughs> even fuck the ball up. That's horrible, and mate. that, can you fuck the ball and you were talking about try we've got players that can, can do, do that. that. We've got guys in the pub today at your home. I used to hate That's the money. Used to hate the money to the pub to do that. The two, to... the two teams on a Friday. Oh, I used to dread that. One Friday you should be looking forward to it, mate. I used one to team would sit in the D. Another team would sit behind the goal, and they would ping the ball at you. You had to <laughs> keep up first time uh-huh. and hit it in the volley. I don't know what was fucking worse. Try to keep the thing up <laughs> or ping it to them for twenty yards. <laughs> oh, mate. No, mate. We start and see when you're crossing. I want it six yards up, you know, as a proper zing Aye. into guys like him. Yeah, can you do it? Mate, and your, your legs are jelly, man. <laughs> well, well, listen, listen, I'm going to take it back right at the start. So when I say is everybody can pass the ball 15 yards, well, clearly everybody can, right? <laughs> <laughs> clearly mate, everybody see, can. That, mate, see that one? He said about, you're, you're at the byline and there's, there's two players in the middle. You need to Remember Lenny them, and Tomo and the, the box and we had to ping into them? And see every time I, I, I try to ping it, right? I'm trying to float it to safety. Lenny just followed it fucking back at us. <laughs> Because it was just, it took it a fucking ages to get in. That's horrible, that. They were the worst team when I was a young boy before you came, Kenny. It was Sutton and Lenny and Hartson and oh, C. Yeah. You had to cross the ball for them, mate. It was like, that was, Lenny that was testing times, mate, done, your, for your character. we done crossing before a game, crossing uh, to work with the strikers, like proper Lenny was on us. And my left foot couldn't get it by the mannequin. Just couldn't get it by my left foot. And Lenny came up to me, he's like, I've watched you before, you can cross the ball with your left foot. So how can you not do it now? I mean, it's in my head, I'm like, I mean, that was me, I didn't ever train me first time again. Arse fell out when I got to the fourth time. Do you remember Slack with me, Cads? Paul Cadness? Do you do No, I don't know if I'd be there. Used to, Cads was the same right full back, used to get mate, me across me, and it was like, I, would have I, I, could, I felt for Cads, and you could actually see his face white, and Slack would just be like, why can you not cross the ball? If it's too much for you, just go on, and you can't, <laughs> like, no, I'm fine. See, in a game, my crossing was brilliant, but in terrain, I couldn't do it. We used to warm oh, up before, nice. like, you know, on the pitch, and you do that wee 10 minute shooting drill before you before the, you get back into the change room. We were at Wolves, and obviously, I wasn't at the nice calm at this time. I fucking it was coming to like two or three games left this season. I was like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm, just gone. A, oh, I'm gone. So we're doing the warm up and the thing, passing it to Ian Evans. He would lay it off and then he would shoot, and I would be just coaxing things on target, making sure they're on target. And he turned and says, Fucking hell, Carla, you going to put your fucking foot through it? <laughs> I went, oh, I will next time. So I put my foot through it, straight over the fucking bar. <laughs> Nearly killed an old boy in the fucking crowd. I had to go up the steps and make sure he was okay, man. He was bust. <laughs> fucking straight <laughs> so trying way, to give him CPR and everyone. The last three years, if we can, we could, we've slaughtered every player. I've just sat here talking Tell about bad one. Aye. But it is, it's like, see, you see confidence. But, yes. yeah, but, you, but then, to the flip side, when you are confident and you only had seasons, Kenny, where you, every touch aye. just turned it, yeah. What aye. was your, your trademark, I would say, was low cross now, nah. low cross the keeper? Nah, near post. Near post, what, just like a bend? See a wee, see if you're, if I'm going through, for this, even if it was a wee bit on this side or that side, I always went near, near stick. I just liked your side foot, near stick, because yeah. keepers obviously expect that. And, you know, that's the thing with, ah, you've all got to go across the keeper. But it's a hard finish, if you're, depending on how much ah, the yeah, angle is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. if you're wide, getting across the goalkeeper, it's a hard finish to get it for there, or the way. I went near, I went nearest route to go. Pretend to go near, and then reverse it. Nearest route to go, nearest route to go, bang. And was it almost side straight line, side foot, passed it in, near post. The amount of coaches I had over the years, when we did striker drills, and they would all say the same thing, see if you just place the ball hard enough, with the side of the foot rolling, fit through it, you score more goals than, and I used to think, fucking, the good strikers always just placed it. Things okay, I always say, boys ask me, some one of the midfielders when the Australia comes, says, Kenny goes, see when I'm shooting, like, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know like, how to hit it. I, I say, well, answer me this then. See when you go to put your foot through it, what are you aiming at? He goes, the goal. I went, exactly. So when I'm shooting, I'm aiming for that corner. Yeah. So I know where I'm going with it, you know. Like, by the way, there's a, there is a time and a place to put your foot and you see some people who shoot yeah, the yeah. ball and it squiggles. I, I couldn't do that. No. You know, I, I, I just kind of, in there, 18 yards, find a corner. 
find a corner or throw a wee bit of eyes into another corner, you know. Yeah. But I'm aiming for something, yeah, yeah. you know. Listen, if you're 25 yards out, it's going to take a, a real powerful side footer or a really precise right side yeah. footer. So there's a time you put your foot through it, but when you, I think when you, when you put your foot through it, you're aiming at the ball, aren't yeah. you? So it could go anywhere. Listen, maybe that's a, an advantage because you don't know where it's going. So who knows? It, you're not giving any advantage to the keeper there because you're putting your foot. But I always, I always, I was a side foot finisher yeah. coming through the goal, near, near the route to goal, near post. Best finisher you played there? I was going to say that then, right? Best finisher. You said, best for who? <laughs> who's the best finisher? Kev Phillips. Kev. I said that Kev. last week. We yeah. used to sit as, as youth team players and Pop Robinson would sit us down and say, strikers, just go and watch that boy what he does after training and he was like what Kenny's just described side footers top bin and you think fucking hell that's a one half then the next one's top bin the next one's top bin then he would do the reverse one because the keeper's starting to read it just had everything yeah. and you're like fucking hell man how, how is he doing this but like Kenny says at the beginning of the show repetition keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it you'll eventually find out what your foot's actually doing and you go with it but he was Incredible. You and I'll clear, I, I tell you who else is good. Else in so you can clear your throat. <laughs> <laughs> tell you who else was good. Mike, Michael Moles came to Sunderland trial. Did he? He was some finisher. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Moles. Oh, did he? But he came to Sunderland man. to trial. What a he was, That was the first time I seen that one where and, and, back to goal, you go that way, that way. I think he did, one of the boys did a cruciate and tried to mark him. <laughs> <laughs> Best finisher, Slaney. <laughs> Gary Hooper. Good Aye. finisher. He would. Mate, he never missed guy. a lot of chances, Gary Hooper. No, when you think about it, there wasn't a lot of chances that he missed. You, Simon. Remember a wee guy, David Conley, played up front for Nor Aye, Republic yes. Ireland, mate. He was a Sunderland as well. Aye. Wimbledon, was he Wimbledon? Aye. Wimbledon? Aye. 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 Oh, everything, mate. Good day, wow. everything. Really Aye. top, top player. Good player he was, man. Uh -huh. Really good player. Yep. Money bastard. Is that his best him, finisher? Best finisher. Oh, Charlie Austin awesome. was brilliant. You, Kenny Boydie? Aye. Boydie, listen, again, a lot of good. Played with Moles. Awesome. Uh, good finisher. But Boydie, Boydie's just, Boydie's just natural goal scorer. Right, he's, they say you don't score over 300 goals if, mm. if you're uh, if you're no, but he just he's one of these guys. I remember we played up at Inverness one year, and it was a rubbish game. I think we were getting beat 1 0 at the time. Knocking our pan, and we're knocking on the door, knocking on the door, just couldn't again. It was one of these, they're behind the ball, they're defending, they're defending, defending. I come off with 10 minutes to go, boy, they got two goals in the last 10 minutes when it opens up. You're knocking your pan around, but things, aye, aye. if yeah. you keep knocking on the door, keep That's asking it. defenders to defend, something will drop, something will open up. You can't defend that way for 90 minutes. Two body drops, two goals, bang. See, when you're they on the bench, move. you sit. I mean, was like, no, I'm buzzing. Well, one, but yeah. there's a big man again. He's like, <laughs> I, could have, I could have been on there and <laughs> scored that goal. <laughs> but, no, how could that not be me? Uh, but, no, but I think that was, that was big man. He just seemed to find a way he scored. He was in the right place at the right time. And by the way, sometimes people always say about movement. I think, by the way, Boydie was really good at no moving sometimes. Mm. But he was no moving because he felt the ball was maybe going in. But see in the box, he did have his wee, his sharp movements yeah. and he his came alive, you know. Yeah. Do you think if players like Boyd now, when they play, when they play now, would they be, the way managers want teams to defend uh, to the front? Because right. you might not have a strike up with press. By the way, that's a, but, but that's also, you need to be able to do it. You look at teams, like, a lot has been levelled at Man United in the last, uh, since, since that Liverpool game. Ah, oh, we want to, well, we can't press. We can't, we can't do it. There's yeah. no, there's maybe doesn't suit Ronaldo now or it doesn't suit the players that they've got. So everywhere oh, we want to do it, we want to do it, but you need to have the players that physically, I've got the physical <coughs> attributes that they, they can, can actually it. go do it, you know. But boy, do we play in a team because he's going to, he's going to get guaranteed his 25 goals. I just can't think of a striker. You're playing him in a two, aren't you? I'm, you're not playing him up on his own. I can't think of a striker out there, like a proper, just a penalty box. Who is a penalty box striker out in football now? Tanny Ings. Possibly. But it gives you more, huh? Nah, it gives you more. Movement, more. That, it gives you more. Hills. I don't really, I can't remember, because back then, there, I mean, that was the thing. You had, yeah. a, every team had. There was a loads, thing, like your shield or shield. I don't know. There was loads really of them. It's good question. That's a good point. But they did bring the bike. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that might have been that way before Guardiola come, it might have been like an Aguero. Like, yeah. mm. but it, but again, he's no because he brings so much more to the, to the team, and his ability wise was great. But when Guardiola came in, there was a lot made that he needs to he needs to do more for the team. Know. You know, but, but I, I think sometimes I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want my striker doing it or the other stuff. I don't want him doing that. I want to keep him in there and just shoot the four. There you go. Is a kind yeah, of a penalty box. Yeah. But by the way, still still does more than that. You know, he does more than that. He's a really really clever player as well. But running about the box, really clever. Finishing, incredible. Sharp, shifting shoots, yeah. incredible. I like talking to strikers that are on fire. Sakala, hat trick. Um, what, what did he bring to Rangers that I never had? Directness. Aye. Yeah. Right on. Well, so that, did, could Rangers mix it up a wee bit more instead of playing feet all the time? They can maybe go down the sides with Sakala. I, said, I still think they, they can do that with Morelos. Morelos, he might not be doing, talking about strikers, he's changed his game completely at the moment. Like He's coming off 
deeper. I think when he does that, you need guys like a Sakala or a Ken or somebody. Arfield even does it for midfield, going beyond. But he's been coming off. I've seen that watching that game yesterday. He was coming off so much, spreading the play wide. Uh, he probably could have been in the box more when Tam was crossing it, but he played. You want him right in the middle of the goal to go and to, to score goals for. He scored so many for that position. But Sakala comes in. He's particularly seen the second half, and he see when you're talking about wide players and confidence. He got his goal. He got his second goal. He's now got, he, he was playing, he's in, found himself on the right wing, and every time he got the ball, he just went bang, oh. right at McGinley. He just put yeah. him on his back foot, put him on his back foot, got him going towards on goal, shifted that across, and he fizzed a couple of good balls in. He was yeah. really, really dangerous, fully confident, couple of goals, mm. gets his hat trick. So maybe he was something need because going forward, and it wasn't just going forward, just to be honest with you, I thought Rangers' his complete performance was exactly what they want to be. They, they had an identity about them, which is what has been built up over the last three, four years. The, the sustained pressure for the half to Motherwell's goal is where the majority of the game is played and that's where they want to be at. Uh, having their possession is great, but in their, it has to be with a purpose, you know. Mm. For their downwards, they just kept probing, shifting the ball quickly, maybe something that Celtic maybe never done as well or maybe just Livingston defended better on the day, who knows. But Rangers moved it side to side, they got it, they crossed. Shift side to side, there would be a combo through, good players combining really quickly, so really, really good performance. He will obviously get the the uh, Sakala will get the credit for getting a hat trick and rightly so he was in the right place at the right time first headers are brilliant here you'd be yeah, proud of that one big man header. comes across back across the goalkeeper into the goal and the saying he played wide left of a front three yeah he did he did but he did find himself through the middle at times because Morelos like I say the Morelos Morelos kept dropping deep taking the touch playing it out wide yeah. to Tav and then that allows Sakala then to go in yeah. the yeah. space which, which is what you want that's what you, what you get with a striker playing wide oh, left yeah. whereas Kent would probably have hung about the edge yeah. of the box instead of getting but what happens there. is when, when Morelos comes to get that ball you get the centre half going with Morelos or maybe somebody else going with Morelos when he lays that off then somebody else is identifying the space behind that then he's nipping in and that's what happened with the, with the, the goal Sakala's header Morelos has dropped half thing with wide and then Tav just put it in and he sees Sakala. He sees the, he, he's no, he's just run into the space. He's no decided, right, I'm going to go and try and get the near post. I'm going to stay between the two centre halves. And if it gets there, brilliant. If it doesn't, then I didn't expect it to get there in the first place. Mm. But no, Rangers yesterday, I think the fans will sleep a bit easier last night because that's probably the, the, the complete performance they've had since the season started. Because they've no got up to speed. Whereas yesterday, they, just they were the very, control. very good. Mm. Motherwell were. Motherwell were. I'm disappointed. Motherwell, Motherwell were atrocious. Well Motherwell were atrocious. I thought Motherwell were bad, but then they were bad because Rangers made them bad. Rangers were Rangers were very on the front foot, right across the board. Um, no, they were decent. And like what made me disappointed, Paul? But I mean, Fur Park was always a horror. Never mind. It was a horrible place to go for anybody. Um, and especially when I was there, it was a, a real hard. Is that because of you? I was, I've always said that there's still no get of me leaving. <laughs> Fucked me ten years ago. <laughs> they need to eventually let it go. But what was it? It was. Say, and you, you even remember when you were coming through at that time. McFadden's, Pearson's. It was a, it was a horrible place so to I, go. By the way, I never liked going for part. No, never. As a player, I don't know what it was. I just never liked going there. It was always a, always a tough game. Uh, but now this season, Ken, it's just like they're just getting rolled there. Although they started, he started well, didn't he? Give him ah. a bit of credit. There's, eh? a, there's a wee bit about that though. Again, if you look at them, they, they maybe won a few games that they maybe shouldn't have won. Yeah. Uh, again, things went in their favour. But by that, that is football. You win games you're not supposed to win. You actually don't win games where you've, you've actually been really, really good. But uh, aye, back to the Rangers. I thought Dable. Hey. Dable being out. Yeah. 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 I said the exact same as what you said. Remember the one. Because he listens to this, that's why. No, yesterday we He sticks a podcast up before the game, doesn't he? And he was saying he just sticks on what we've said and says, there you go, go and do that. Aye. But, but yesterday something happened in the game and you clocked it. What oh, the wee one he nicks in. Jarrah yeah, spoke about that, did he? He was, he was like, I'm not top of his passing, he's like, I'm top of the second ball. Reading the game, yeah. honestly, he he's, he's just, the bounty second balls that he picks up just gets, and then the, then the kit and the went again yesterday. It's because he's reading of the game, he's positioning from that deeper, mm. that kind of sixth position for him. He just, re by the way, give him it all day. Yeah, in any right. kind of situation, he'll keep it, he'll pop it, he'll move, he'll get it. But see when they're attacking, he's just, he's just in the right position. The ball then comes out, normally it lands on Debo. Mm. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's no chance. No. It's him reading and anticipating where the ball's going to be or where it's most likely to end up. Gets it, recycles it, and that was it. Bang, right in Mullen. He's never under any pressure. Because but he gets himself into positions that doesn't exactly. allow him to be under pressure. But when he is under pressure, Kev, he just makes good decisions. He pops it off does. first time. When he's got time and space, he opens his But he pops it off to people who he knows, he's not looking at, right, so I'll give that to Simon. He's thinking, well, I'll give that to Simon. Hopefully if he does the same as what I'm thinking, he'll give it to him and then we move again. Yeah. It's always, he never puts anybody else under pressure with his passes. He's, he's caviar, isn't he? He's like, caviar. Do you see what we said about Celtic, about the, the 
and say, oh, can I play with it? Kyogo, do you think Rangers can replace Davis? I think he's so important to them, Davis. I don't know, I think he's totally different for you. I think Kamara and Naribo are no similar. One strong, but Davis is that one different. that's different for yeah. you. Big Aribo as well for me. He He's... Been brilliant. He's... See, he gets his certainly so many good positions and he uses his body, body very, yeah. very well. You're talking about how Tom Celtic missed Tom Rogic. Yesterday, there's a couple of times the Big Aribo got the ball in the box and it's one-twos and he's holding people off. Allowing him to get receive it kind of the first time he'd a one two right in the corner probably should have done a keeper's made a good save but that's him using his body he's a, he's a big strong boy yeah mm. nah, he's a good player he's actually probably been one of the most consistent I would nah, say this very, year because good. whether he plays as part of the midfield three or whether he plays higher up on the on the you right can put him anywhere and like he'll that. do your job he's just a good player that's why I actually really liked Arfield and him on that kind of side because Arfield gets forward as well and mm. he gets into these wee hard positions where they're hard to pick up yeah. or a lot of he, he attracts a lot of players to him, which yeah. maybe frees frees players. So he picks up really good positions that could be a centre back, full back, and even a midfielder. Are thinking right? We need to keep an eye on him. That might then free an Aribo yes. or a Morelos. Mm. They play there that pass a lot. So the the sucking in there, and you've got a Rebo and you've got Arfield, and then Morelos comes down the line, and they go on the wee angle ball, and then they look to actually hit him behind that space that he's coming for. It was uh, I thought they were excellent yesterday. I really did. The six one. By the way, it was forty minutes. Uh, Right. batter in the door trying to get that like, that equaliser but when it came that was it it was only going to be one Andy result. was in tears again wasn't he uh, he was saying that Sakala position that's where he wanted to play for him just I should have given a chance three, he never got the chance yeah but see on the side, see on the, that Motherwell one, I was only having a bit but a joke there, but oh. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what a retreat, oh, retreat. No, 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 Because like, my, my point is, they need to, Motherwell genuinely need to get back to <laughs> that team that is a horrible place to go. You see, you watch Hearts, um, Habits may need that. Motherwell should be up there. They should. But with the, I don't. I know. I don't know, Paul. I'd love to know his budget because I don't think it'd be anywhere near Hibs. It's going to be a lot smaller. Aberdeen. It's going to be a lot smaller. That's why that actually shows like what Stephen Robinson done. Yeah. At Motherwell, would like to finish third that year was was incredible, you know. But uh, aye, it's, it was always a tough place to go. But you just look at them in the moment. You're been kind of working on it yesterday. The guys are saying like they need to get a goal second half. How, how are they going to get yeah. that goal? How are they going to get yeah. that goal? I just thought there was maybe a wee creative spark maybe missing. Again, it might be some of discussed. Maybe it's a, maybe, maybe it looks to look, like look at a different shape, a different way of playing to try and maybe get the best out of what's going on. And by the way, you're talking, there was that five games without a win, they had four losses and a draw. So they're not in a great bit of form. So they're low. We discussed yeah. earlier about confidence, but they need to they need to try and stop that. But then on the flip side, he did try and play that way, didn't he? They were losing games. So he's, yeah. he started to go and be harder to beat. Changed his style, no? Yeah, yesterday that long yeah. going, didn't he? He's oh, that, and he's get back to, to the turtleneck, didn't it? All since turtleneck. Mm -hmm. uh, right, talking to managers. Obviously, news brought last week. Walter Smith, probably the main guy in your career, Kenny. Nah? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, I mean, like I said, worked with so many managers, but <clears throat> there's a few who really, really impact you. Like, you know what? There's a few, a few people that will impact your life. You the, the way Walter had impacted mine. You know, as a, as a coach and a manager, he was. He got absolutely, and I know there's a, there's hundreds of guys that will say the same thing, but he got the best out of me somehow. Don't know, I don't know how. Belief, giving you a belief, giving you a confidence, backing you in times that maybe he felt you were under a bit of pressure. They gave you a full, full backing, and getting that backing and that confidence for a man of his stature, it, it did make you feel like mm. unbeatable at times, you know. And he got the best out of me. I know there's uh, speaking to guys after last week. There's there's so many to feel the same, but no impacted my career my life gave me the opportunity to go back to Rangers in 2008 which probably I wouldn't have had that opportunity had it maybe for him at the hill I spoke to him obviously I kept in, in touch with Super Ali uh, obviously when I worked with him in Scotland and then I kind of knew that season there was going to be a, a chance of, of potentially going back so had he not been there there's no doubt that opportunity wouldn't have been there you know so it was uh, forever grateful for that but he did, like I said I had my best spell as a Scotland player in regards to performances and goals under water uh, when he went back to Rangers he brought me back I said that first year was I think Celtic had won the league three years in a row and that year then 2008 we then won three leagues uh, first year we never scored that many goals but we won the league in the Scottish Cup the next year we won the league in the League Cup and the next year it was the league in the League Cup again so it was a successful spell so again it's not about individuals but for me I felt really really confident Playing my best, my stuff, the best my stuff in my career under underwater. Does he hear a lot? Of, do you, got, you got a question? See, sorry, see, after pitch though, because everybody's seen he's got this the aura about me. 
what what makes it? You know, like it's, it's one of these things that like could have asked that so much. Better. Somebody well, walks if, if if somebody walks in a room, they j you can just feel the presence. You said that you got that when I walked in. You know, there. that's it. You yeah. walk. I seen you in the street there. So <laughs> did you stop talking? <laughs> it's one of them that he walks in, and and you can just feel his presence when he stands in front of you. As a manager, you're like, right, okay. You're ready, you're waiting for that, right? He's going to fuel you. Mm. He's going to get you fuel to go and actually go and win the game. And his team's done that. You know, yeah. he found it. He, go back to our, our nine man cup final. Like, how, how did we win that? You know, how did you. Nine men, I don't know if any of have played with nine men. It's hard, by the way. The spaces, the, and, and the pit, you're two men down, mm. only two men. And you think, oh, I'll just sit by. But no, no, you're actually working so hard to plug gaps. It's fucking hard. We won that cup final and he just. He had just built winning teams, you know, he had... It's like you didn't know what to let him down, will it? That's exactly what it was. There's been a lot of players who have said the same thing, exactly that, that he, he, was, he was so... Listen, it was, it was, it was, it was I would, wouldn't say hard, but he was demanding. Yeah. He knew what it took to represent that football club. He knew what was required to, to win games of football, leagues and, and cups, and he just... He demanded it. He wanted you to... He wanted, if you'd never done it, then he, he, would, he would either tell you or I think a lot of people have again mentioned the stare. He would, he would give you a look and you would think, without saying a word, you would know, oh, I, I need to get my finger out here. Is that when you're on the pitch? I like get, well, dressing rooms, training, if there's if something going on, he, he could he, he, he would, he'd be standing with his... And he would just be, he would just give it one of them. If, if you caught eyes on him and you knew he was looking at you, but like, right, I need, I'm doing, I'm doing something wrong here. I need, I need to do, I need to do. Him. But he had a presence, an, an aura. He was a brilliant man, you know, brilliant mm -hmm. man. Again, how he got the best out of people, I don't know. Again, I can go back to the Scotland group. That, that was after Betty. Oh, yeah. like it was a bad time that by the way Bertie was alright as well I say that I quite no, liked I him I like, oh, quite say liked the same. him you know, like, Bert, Bertie's training and everything he did was, was brilliant it was the Puma Kings that killed him wasn't it, wasn't <laughs> it? it was Kings. just the fucking the cake on the Friday night before games <laughs> <laughs> Cake and a beer, oh. cake and a beer every night before the game. Get yourselves down to the lobby, oh, boys. I love that. Cake that and a beer. Good job. You know, but it, it, but what came in after that? And it was a bit of as much as like boys actually enjoy working with Bertie. It, the results were, were poor. Oh. You know, we were in a bit of a bit of a state, and the gaffer came in straight away, and it was like overnight. There was like a, just a different like focus in, in, in the group. Nobody was moaning, by the way. Like, see, you've got 25 guys, 24 guys, 18 or sevens on the bench, 11 are starting, there's five or six and leaving. There was none of the wee moans, ah, fucking yeah. hell, this is rubbish coming away of Scotland. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, everybody was together. And he just, I, I don't know how, how he'd done it, unless he was ruined every single player yeah, speaking to them, getting around about them, I don't know. But there wasn't, there was just a different feel with it. And we've seen instant, instant tur uh, turnaround results, performances. Again, take nothing away from how good he was. As a, as a football coach, a football manager, and an organizer, is tactically, he, he was he was incredible. He would walk us through, we'd, we'd be playing Italy or you'd be playing France, and he would walk you through how you needed to be to get a, the best chance of winning this game of football. And 99 times out of 100, it was the game played out the way you could see it. You know, so he seen, he knew going on about how good a man he was, how good a manager he was, and and, and the aura and the presence. That hundred percent, he had all that, but he was absolutely spot on tactically as, as a football, yeah. with his football brain. Yeah. So did he? Did he? Was he like? Did he actually coach? And when he would be Scotland, absolutely, and see the games at Rangers, he would he would come for a Champions League game or an old fun game. He would be the one that would that would do the yeah. job, aye, to get you ready for that game, aye. Could you, get, could you get a laugh in it? Did you like a laugh in it? He loved it. You know, listen, he had, he had Kenny McDowell and, and, uh, Kenny, was and good, uh, Kenny was great. He had Kenny McDowell and Alan McCoy, was his, his two kind of assistants with Rangers. He had Coyste and Tommy at Scotland. So you can imagine the kind of carry on and they, they, they two, oh, Kenny yeah. and, and, and Coyste and, and Tommy and, and Ali. It was, listen, it was, for me, that's good management as well. Of course. Because he knows how yeah. good he is, right? And what he's done is he's brought guys in that can relate to the group. You know, and they got about the group, and it was a brilliant group to be involved in, mm. both club and country, because of the because of what he's brought to them. these guys were brilliant guys. You know, to tell a story, they had the boys bubbly and lively all the time. It was it was just a really really good mix that he brought in, and that's good management as well. By the way, he's very very good, and he does all his work that he's absolutely top of the class at. But he's also brought guys in who can, can help in different things. Yeah, yeah. You know, you never met Tommy fell asleep in the meeting. Aye, yep. So what, what, can you remember what game it was? I don't know what game it was, but it would be, it'd be sad. It's obvious, look at Tommy. Might even have been, might even have been Coisty. Tommy, Tommy. 
Something like that. <laughs> Lot Lomond of Mar Hall. White was Lot Lomond. Just against the wall. That guy, the gaffer's doing his mirror. What a guy. <laughs> yeah, what a guy. But no, it was actually real good times. Like times you look back when you, you appreciate more when you're finished. You know, you're in groups that are really tight, want to do it for the manager. Everybody's on the same page, which is what every every club wants, you know. Uh, there's a lot talked about our national setups now that they want to try and create this kind of club atmosphere. England going into the last Euros and, and World Cups, there was a lot about it. Scotland are now talking about it now. It's yeah. a real club and f- family atmosphere, you know. So it's uh, it, what we had that. They had that with his groups. I remember the young boys, you probably don't remember, but when Walter Smith was the manager, Tommy was obviously the coach. We'd have to go on a, like, a Monday night to Hamden and, and be the opposition that Scotland are playing against. Ah. So we, I don't know what team we were, but Tommy gets us on. He's like, right, these are top players, obviously. When we, Tommy joined in for us, he plays playing left back for us. We were all kids. It's like when we win the ball back, fucking keep it. Don't give the ball away because we'll, we'll not see it again for twenty minutes. So you just keep the ball. You just keep the ball. We win it back. Pass it to Tommy. Somebody comes running up, mate, tries to nutmeg him. Loses the ball, they run through and scored after just being like that. As soon as we get this back, make sure we keep it. Try to not make it straight away. Oh, <laughs> but it did just oh, look like a great amazing. atmosphere oh, about the place. Good. Again, and, and they play played their part in that, but that's that's management, you know, bringing people in that have got different skill sets to you. You know, you, you've got this and you're really good at this, but maybe not so good at that. So you need to kind of get that on your staff somewhere. And with they two boys, again, for, for, for Scotland, uh, Tommy and I were brilliant for the group. Yeah. But, you know, it was a real good vibe in that. In that. You had physio Pep, you had Omar, who was the like, player liaison. Omar, I don't know. He's back still to, a bit. Yeah, he is. You know, he is. Omar's still there. You know, he, he, Koisty told stories about Omar. Omar was like the player liaison, a brilliant guy. We used to play cards. Me, Koisty, Omar, and big guys, we'd be playing hearts. It would be me and me and guys against Koisty and, and Omar. And it's like just a brilliant, brilliant vibe. But Koisty yeah. tells stories about Omar <laughs> when the first when he started, Omar was still a bit, he was a masseur. At the time, so he's went, he was the masseur, and he would be one hand putting sand on the team, he's got a belt on or something, he's checking, he's got one hand just rubbing, <laughs> rubbing toys. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant stories. And by the way, and that Omar was right through, he was right through the, the setup for years and years and years, and it was just a real good. What, what about Billy in? He brought oh, me Billy in the car. Have you got any oh, good he, 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 he brought Billy in, oh, and he was uh, the Chelsea masseur. By the way, Billy's a genius. A genius. What the best? As a masseur. Is he? Huh? Honestly, he's a genius. But he what just, is it? He's got a small hand. He's a, I don't know what he says, but it's his, is it his right side or his left yeah. side. So he's got a gun. He's got an absolute gun. And this one's like mine. No, no, <laughs> no. <that>, no. Right? <laughs> so, uh, he's, but he's uh, obviously the Chelsea boys are through that time. You're Ashley Coles, your Drogba, your John Terry's, Frank Lack. They, they raved about him. Wayne Bridges, all these guys uh, loved him. But so, so the gaffer brought him up. We, we never knew this, but it was, it was what was first trip away in the San Siro and we're going to play Italy in the San Siro it's, this, it's the gaffer's first game and right Billy up you go this, just before we went out we're going out to walk out into the tunnel right Billy on you go we Billy's like what, what is it gaffer come on tell us a joke so no, we Billy we Billy just comes on stands in front and we wee London accent he, I mean, he looks the part as well you know but by the genius I'll say it again an absolute genius he goes into his, in his, in his party piece, he's telling jokes about this, about that. All the boys are bubbly, they're fucking howling because he's, he's a funny little fucker, yeah. you know. He go out and play early. That was his first game. And did Walter speak after him? Or did nah, that, is that nah, how he's nah, going? That's the way he's going. The way he's going. Brilliant. And you know, just uh, kind of take the pressure off, probably. I don't, well, this, and that's, this is one of the, his gifts, you know. Yeah. He knew what to do and when to do it. And we were going out and playing. It's his first time, by the way. It's a game where you're not expected to win. But as you know, Playing for Scotland, you, it's maybe there's no a lot. If you get beat, you get beat, right? But if you do, if you're no great, you're going to still get crucified, you know. So he just knew what he did. And that was Billy's. That was Billy's first trip. Gaffer got him up to tell a few jokes That's before brilliant. we went and played Italy. So, and again, he was another one that came onto the staff that yeah. played his part. Yeah, so just a really, really good people within the group that time. It was brilliant. It was a good time to get involved. Jig, Jig said he said it's when he signed for Rangers, he went to Murray Park first on his medical. Then he had to drive to Ibrox. Oh, you, you, you hear Jig treating about it? He yeah. said he had to get in the car from Murray Park to Ibrox or what? And he said, I, I, I was like an eight year old kid. I did not know what to say to him. I was so awkward. What was the question? You asked him the worst question of him. Oh, what was the, the fuck you asking me up for? <laughs> <laughs> he says he just completely crumbled because he was so nervous sitting next to, to Walter Smith. So, yeah. why was he just signed, wasn't he? He just signed there. Uh, and Walter Smith took him to Ibrox. He says, Come on, I'll take you up to Ibrox to see the stadium. Wow. That's when I, when I was at Rangers, I, when, I, when Jig was there, I said to Jig, I said, what's the difference between, like, obviously McCoist and Walter? Because you're obviously working on the both, and he just says, McCoist will come into the change room, and we'll hear a laugh, we'll hear a joke. 
Walter walks in like Kenny said, everybody just goes. This is the oh, yeah. mood changes, the, the big mark. No, no, that people didn't respect Aaron McCoy, it was just a different way of respect. Yeah. But I, I, I only ever caught, came across him when he played against him, and he was always like, we'd always say hello, and he would respect be complimenting him. me and stuff. And it's, it's, it was sad, like, you watch all those tributes last week, man. Bring a tear yeah. to a glass yeah. eye, it was unbelievable. It just, uh, regardless of what team you support, man, it was just a, a great guy in Scottish mm. football. Unbelievable. I love the Boydie story as well. Do you hear, have you heard no. that? They were, they were playing somebody in a cup final. It was fucking roasting that day. It was full cup school. Boydie doesn't know that Walter Smith's behind him and come back and he's like, you know, to one of the boys, he goes, fuck, what was it? It's fucking too hot too hot. Too hot for football. <laughs> <laughs> he, he dragged him at half time. Did he drag him? He came off at half time. I, I don't know if that's why he got <laughs> dragged, <laughs> by the way. But Boydie did say, he goes, I was just fucking shite, you know. But it didn't help with the gaffer's head. But the gaffer, but I think Holy Sky picked it up as well. As oh, was it that was easy? It was too hot for football, but it was by a scorcher. It was absolutely scorcher. But I think, I don't know if it was natural. Okay, on for him but anyway natural score like that world day as soon as he came on yeah. drops half volley bang at the top corner and won the game 1-0 uh, was, was there any see the, was there any of the team talks or a particular game where you're like wow that team talk was unreal or any moments like that no there was, you know there was like loads and loads of moments but I, I always go back to the, the 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 Celtic game that we played my first game back was at Parkhead was 4-2 I've told this a couple of times, but you talk about tactically and seeing things and how the game works. And it's, it's a, honestly, it was a simple wee thing that he had just says at, at half time. So it was 1 1 at half time. I then scored to break it 2 1 and we had a corner. And Devo was on. I, I, I pulled Devo at half time. He says, Devo, next corner we get, you need to look at Pedro on the edge of the box. And I, I was I'm sitting next to Devo and I, we came across the and Devo's right now, right now, ball. That was it. Sure enough, after that, nice. Devo goes to Pedro, Pedro then smash it in. Brilliant. You know, he just, Celtic were bare at the edge of the box. I don't know if they'd left one or two up or if they just had everybody <laughs> back in, in areas. But just there was so many wee things like that. And again, like I say, the, the tactic side of it about getting us organised with that Scotland team not to be beat was, was the thing. Mm. He just, France, I, I never played the France game, but obviously I was part of the group. I was uh, suspended. But the, the prep work going into that game, no one's fine well we are going to be by the way you need luck you yeah. need Craig Gordon to make two or three probably world he saves tries to get a blast one over the bar when he probably should score but the game plan's there it's mapped out and it's exactly how it was and he says you'll get a chance whether it be counter whether it be a mistake or a set play you'll get a chance and listen you get your chance and big guys, it big guys tackles it into the goal it's uh, I was at that game that's good that was at that time that campaign man. Uh, it was. The, whole, uh, that, the whole country came together with that one did you ever get a blast off him? Do you remember? Aye. A few times. Uh, cup, that cup final, the nine man cup final we did at half time, because it was all kicking off at half time when we uh, were getting beat. Because like, it was off the back of the Falkirk Cup final the year before, where we were rubbish. The Falkirk were better than us yeah. that day. And it took a world day for us to win 1 0. That game against St. Mirren we were poor. Obviously, we had already went down to 10 men. Tomo had been sent off in the first half. So it was all, again, there was like, not just me, there was a lot of big characters and, and, and big like, men in that team, winners, that were fucking boys, this is this is not good enough, blah, blah, blah. And I personally felt we were, there was players hiding. That we were, oh, fucking hell, I don't want to get involved here. Yeah. Now we'll wait for somebody else to do it. And I was having a wee bit of a go in that sense. And Walter just coming and told everybody to sit down, but really, yeah. you fucking sit the fuck down. I was like, no bother. I just fucking sat down. <laughs> that was me, sit down. Sure enough, we went out the second half. Danny then gets sent off. I don't know, 10, 15 minutes into the second half. And that's the thing, that's where he came down because Kenny and Ali took the team cup games, that's for right. the cup games and he came down. Listen, I, I remember, I've seen it, watched it back and he's on the touchline. He's just standing on the touchline the gaffer and he's fucking pulling people. He's like, get across here. Right, you need to fill in here because like, we need to get another body back there. And then you, you know, you'd see Gink Nacho would be across and then Nasey was across and I was across and it was like, because we were like the, the forward players that yeah. still had to try and like, like win the game for us at yeah. some point. So, but we were also having to get back in and plug gaps and defend because we were nine men. Mm -hmm. So you're right mid, you're right back sometimes, you're, you're striker, and there's just, that was just, that was carnage, absolute carnage. But he was there, he orchestrated it, he, he, he seen what was going on, he, he would pull you into a different area and then he headed it in with me when I put it amazing. in. He goes to the thing, you, just, you see him just nod it in. So it was, no, he was just an amazing, amazing manager, a brilliant, brilliant human being. Mm. Tom used to say as well, he used to say to Kevin Thompson, Ibrox playing Celtic, he said, if you didn't get booked in the first 20 minutes, I'm taking you off. No way. Sir. 
So if you get sent off, if you get sent off, you're going to tell your boss. But <laughs> get booked because it would get the whole place going. It would get him booked. He said he used to say it to Tom, if you're not booked in the first 30 minutes, I'll take you off. They wee things, mate. What other manager would think of that? Nah, it's just, it's just again, everybody's got their, their stories it's and their personal their memories, stories. you know. Brilliant. Uh, Stephen Glass, Islands Doubters. Isn't he? Absolutely. Happy for him? Really, really happy. Because it must be tough for your first job when you're getting that amount of criticism. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's turned it round. And I think I was wanting it really, really back to him. <laughs> through it all. There was a lot of, and here certainly there was a lot of doubters. Um, and I really backed him. What's changed then? Just up your up a green, Si. Just to be rubbing the green. Because, um, you know, I'm into my stats. Every game, they had more shots, more possessions, mm-hmm. you're thinking. Sometimes you can't really look at it too much, but you're thinking, if it's every game that's the case, this will turn. Um, but then, speaking to a few players, and we're going to name names, supposedly they've kind of changed their style a wee bit. They've went three at the back now. Right. Because Bruni, yeah, Bruni's, Bruni's dropped back. Dropped back. back. So, so, and I, I don't know if they're. Because obviously they were talking about this style, play, 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 pass for the other. So I, I think they've, they still want to play, but know as much. I've heard it through the great big man. Eye, and uh, they, they don't want to play as much. And they've been obviously, and as I say, a good manager. Maybe when the confidence goes, let's maybe start going, uh, pop my bit again. But no, I'm absolutely delighted for them. And um, no, that actually looks good. Because when that wee chairman came out, remember? Yeah. It looked disastrous, I thought. Yeah. But it's, it's turned uh, around really, really well, Kevin. Because you, you were on him. I, 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 I like that. That. <laughs> was on him last week. Did you think he was a bit harsh on? No. Uh, no. I, I, I said, was it last week? I said, said uh, <laughs> when Kenny was on, I said, let's not get, let's let Aberdeen not get carried away with yourself. You've drew the, the um, no, they beat, who did they beat last Hibs. Saturday? Hibs. 2-1. Yeah. And, and then, then, they and then they go and draw the Rangers after being 2-0 up and then obviously beat Hearts, who are unbeaten all season. So, Nah, give them the respect. Watch the highlights. Um, what a game, by the way. It was a decent game. game. Fair Hearts probably won the upper best. Bad defending for Lewis Ferguson's the goal. I think somebody's got to. Lewis Ferguson's yeah. never going to run into the box and head on goals. Great, great finish Set for pieces, Lewis. Massive. Pieces, massive. But no, Aberdeen turned it round. Got to keep the momentum going now. And I think if they can keep that going, then the fans will appreciate maybe the, the appointment that the chairman's made. Do you know what the brilliant set piece is? Blocking Aberdeen. Well, you know what? Aye, that's what I was going to say. Bruni done it again, St. Bruni, Bruni, it happened again. Bruni did it again yesterday, but yeah. I don't think the guy that did it noticed. So what happened was two goals early mm-hmm. and then the ball comes over them too and Bruni pushed his teammate into the other. To stop him. Hart's teammate. And that allowed, what do you call him? Um, but surely when you're playing Kenny... When that set up there, you can see that that's going to happen. Yeah. See, the thing with blocking and that is, and we, we got, <laughs> uh, played a Sydney Derby last year and we worked so hard at Ziggy. Had to Ziggy Gordon. Didn't want him on the ball, had, yeah. had to block oh, somebody, all right? <laughs> had to block somebody. He's going to take your right? coaching badge. And Ziggy, <laughs> and Ziggy <laughs> literally <laughs> takes it, literally, he close lines the guy, right? <laughs> and the corner goes doing a treat, by the way. But it's the one where you go, somebody goes out, you pop it back, everybody floods in, you block the guys who are supposed to be coming in out, somebody back. sweeps and boom. One nil up, Bruce came out, scores, we're all buzzing up, we're jumping about like lunatic. Yeah, Bruce! <laughs> Called off for Ziggy clothesline him, right? <laughs> you, you didn't need to clothesline him, no. I said Ziggy at half time. <laughs> all you need to do is put yourself in the line of the player who's coming out, because then at least he needs to sidestep you and get round you. But that point, we've got the yard, half yard. No, Ziggy clothesline him. And that was <laughs> a good. He's got a bit of Ziggy Gordon about him, hasn't he? See that? See me, Ali Crawford scored on a little weekend. <laughs> 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 when my weekend, this is a little bit him. Scoring against your pal, Charlie. That's why he's here, so. Because Ali Crawford, like, Ali Crawford had his hair up. So you need to tell us about the Falkirk report. No, was it Falkirk? Oh, did you see that Falkirk that report on? That fucking genius. Somebody found the Falkirk scouting report on me. Oh, mate, this is genius. Joey, the uh, best ever. What was it? You'll try to bully opponents? Try to bully opponents, you loud mouth. <laughs> that doesn't stop talking. Don't listen to him. Don't let him get in your head or something like that. A bully, mate. Five foot A bully. He's winning. He's a bully. A 5'8 bully. Took their dinner money off. Brilliant. That's your order, aren't it? Aye. We'll play sideways and backwards. That's because you had no a... No creativity. That's because you had a, a go at them last week, was it? Must be, aye. Must be, aye. I had it to get us. Uh, Andy, have you seen it, Kenneth? I did see it, aye. Red card? I think it's harsh, I'll be honest. He's went in and he's late. I'll say that, he's yeah, late. he's late. He's no high. I don't think... He's he was, off the ground, no, I don't think he was overly aggressive. Listen, he's, he's went in a bit of pace because he's having to run quickly to try and get across the block it and he is late it's, it's, it's probably borderline but orange I, I, card aye and it's one of them where I can shout it's a great, it's a great shout but no I thought it was harsh on him uh, but you can see why it was 
probably give an eye orange would have been about right. Aye? Yeah, get against a, another uh, open goal kind of associate, Lewis Derek's Ferguson. Oh, aye. But supposing that Andy was raging because Derek took the dildo for the hydro, that's, that's why he smashed him on it. So that'd be fair, but no, he was, he was, we'll obviously, we'll, we'll be deemed to stick up for not at all. Mate. You're honest. But honestly, it's not a red card. No. Anybody with fucking half a football and brain knows that's not a red card. <laughs> One of your boys got. Two stud marks in his knee in the weekend, it was a booking, and that, that was a red card. Aye, Back that's the frustrating, that's the frustrating thing. I, I think that you're spot on, Nicky, with the, I think with that decision, I, I don't know if that's somebody no completely understanding the game with that. Aye, and, Andy, Andy would, if Andy was here, he would be the first to say, I was late, tad mm. slow, Lewis Ferguson was a bit quicker, young legs, unfortunately Andy's turned 30, he's slowing down a wee bit, he was just a wee bit too slow, and... He didn't, he didn't go in high. Studs won the light on his shin. Lewis Ferguson popped his hill back up. Had a wee scrimash with Bruni and Andy's quite happy about you it. Taste, you could taste Bruni's elbow on his breath yesterday, couldn't you? <laughs> 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 uh, no, he, he's There's someone there, but they turned that. Bro, Bruni yeah. organised something with that. Uh, Bruni and Andy. He's been harsh today. Hydro, 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 Oh, was terrible yesterday, wasn't it? Though? Oh, he said it was terrible. Mate. I don't know why he's wet it. Wet it. The last thing he did, that thing is wet it. Mate. The wet look. Shockwaves he had on it. The tub shockwaves. Shockwaves. Owned it. Owned it. Owned it. <laughs> they made a big effort. He burst there. He did go for it, mate. He was proper on it. What sounded like in the, in the dressing room? Just was he loud? No loud as in banter wise, but no, he was. He was. Loud, he? loud. Always had a, a view and opinion, which your game was encouraged. Yeah. Uh, the guy for uh, Mark Warburton encouraged it. So Andy, listen, he's known now. He's he's got a view. He's, he knows his stuff. Knows football. But again, he, he kids on. He takes the pass with me. Waldo sitting. He was right involved every mm. day. By the way, Aye. every single day was at the end of the table. Where you used to ever get quite heated. Me and Andy, no, I, yeah. nah, no really, no really. Uh, didn't need to because Andy yeah. always gave his all. You know, Andy was always committed. He was always professional he, he, he turned up to work every single day so it was uh, no you didn't need to get with that because like I said last week never ever individual kind of annihilation of any player if you want to try and or you want to kind of like put an effort and then I think that's that's deserved you know yeah, but nah be quiet, it was uh, nah, got on well you asking about other former teammates when they were asking about Gavison oh I that is mental oh, sure. honestly what a guy <laughs> he's funny isn't what he? a guy. he's just mental you know like you know he was Incredible player. I always oh, remember up so when I was at was Rules. When I was at Rules, so it would have been maybe three three seasons before I played with him. I it was at Everton and I was on the bench that day at Goodson Park. And he single handedly annihilated us that day. Did it was, was unbelievable. That I like racing that touch. probably did. I like racing that touch. Because by the way, would have been one of the ones that got annihilated. That's what he said. <laughs> I said that. It was that probably because he, he scored. And I think he assisted the other one. But he was in one of these moods, Tommy, that he got the ball and he just went past everybody. I think he scored, his, his goal was similar. I was shot across the goal, really good, really good finish, strong. He just ran the game for 45 minutes. He was unbelievable. Like, incredible ability as a yeah, football yeah. By the way, strong as an no, ox, mad good. as a brush. But he just couldn't, he just didn't want to listen. You know, he didn't want to run He didn't want to care. I remember we're, they were, they were, they were preparing for a, I'm sure it was a, the Champions League game against, might have been Man United. United. I think it was, mate. And you're trying to get the reins on it. Right? Tommy, this is, we're off the ball. This is where we need you. We need you here. Aye, 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 aye. Game time, it was everywhere but there. <laughs> he just wanted to be involved in. Oh, would he yeah. see, see <laughs> if so games in that, if Stratton or, or somebody came to him, would, would, he, would he answer back or would he? No, nah, he would just be quite he, respectful, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, he was, was he's fine, but he was just he was just in his own his own world, you know. He's like, incredible, what a player, like ability wise. Do you ever play a tennis against him? Did you, 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 no, no, I don't you think so. Tennis I don't think so. You're waving the head tennis net got put up. Fucking ridiculous, man. Was he good, eh? Oh. He used to spin his passes, remember? They, they he spin that thing. Yeah. And it was one of the, I think it was one of these things that maybe the, the gaffer never liked at the time, because just to fucking pass it properly. And Tommy's fucking, <laughs> Tommy's giving it the wee spinners and he's, uh, you know, incredible player. That's incredible right. player. It wasn't my new game, he says to him, just sit there, no. do not move, yeah. and the ball went wide and he just went straight <laughs> what a team they had enough. <laughs> he's just, oh, he, oh, what a guy. Bro, what were you there when he dunked Elvis in the pool? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, see that one? Was he, did they wait for him to get ready? Elvis was taking the cooldown in the pool at the front, and Tommy was like 13 to back. It was like everyone's in a single file. <laughs> running, turn, run back down the pool. So Tommy's went right under the water. <laughs> up, 
right next to Elvis and just went, fuck you, man. He'd write down, but he's strong. At, so <laughs> big Elvis is trying to help me. He's just holding on the door. <laughs> big Elvis would have hated that, wouldn't he? Oh, he's doing fuming. He's doing fuming. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, right, Hearts. Well, they'll bounce back, wouldn't they? I experienced squad, experienced manager. Didn't just a boy. Boyce was obviously injured for Saturday, so that's a big loss. I think yeah. one and two should have gone to win a league. I think he's dead. No, no, no. A couple of weeks ago. No, no, no. Don't be daft. Don't be daft, Paul. I was another one. Don't be daft. I can't believe he did a water seed, didn't he? So again, I'm ahead of these. At the end of the day, to come up for the first division, the championship, and to be where they are, that's their first defeat, what, 12 games into the season? League games, I think. That's a. That's. An achievement in itself. So, what, uh, what they need to keep doing is they need to bounce back for this result and kick on again because it can easily go the other way. Motherwell on a run, Aberdeen were on a run. They've turned it around. Hibs. It can it, yeah. and Hibs look at Hibs. No one a game for. They were lucky the fucking game was cancelled Saturday because I could have seen. I know. I think Ross County. I could have seen Ross County. Maybe. Um, mm. But anyway, no Hearts former club. Obviously, we're, we're, we're panning the Sandy, playing with him and that as well. But it's, um, You're pandering to Tom Coates for that one. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, no, I always want to see him do well. But it makes the scene, scene starting to get a wee bit interesting. Yeah. Starting to get a bit it's a knocky, isn't it? It's a, it's a really, really is a crazy, crazy league. I was the most competitive league in the world, there you go. Oh, wow. I really, really Don't know, that so. Australian one's quite competitive, isn't it? Oh, was I? What about Edinburgh <laughs> Derby's? Enjoy it? Ah, I loved it. Again, played... Uh, Who would you been up against? Oh, might, Elvis, Elvis might have been Elvis might have been did, there Elvis, would Elvis be in your ear constantly oh, he was murder to play against you know he did referee it actually wound you up something awful that he'd just be talking all the time in the referee's ear I said was it last week he invented the, the, the run to the corner and the fall even though there's nobody's near him but still got the kick <laughs> somehow would you call him the daddy the daddy nah, he was uh, <laughs> <laughs> but listen bro so he used to say I'm the daddy we used, to, we used to play in Scotland and we beat two like shit on the national teams, two like scumming up on the national teams that wouldn't even get a game against the pub team and they say, right lads, keep this going. That's two in a row. And I think we played fucking San Marino and fucking <laughs> Andorra, man. Morning chops. Well, he was nah, immaculate though, mate. He always was he? Every every day immaculate. injured. Was he, a, was he a good captain? Great guy. I love Elvis. I do. I, do. I love him. I think he's great. <laughs> what is he? Is Proper guy, mate. He's great. Uh, Isn't yeah. he, Kenny? No, he's, he's top man. Like, straight, honest. By the way, good coach, good manager. He's got good ideas. But as a teammate, really, really good teammate. I worry about uh, Aye, brilliant. Is he still at Carlisle? No, no, no. He no, is no. working at Brentford now. Oh, oh, so he is. Yeah. Yeah. Boy plays at Brentford as well, didn't he? His boy's meant to be a good know. player, Aaron. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, did you ever hear the, did he ever read the poem to you? His favourite poem, that if. No. I've got a tattoo on there, it's brilliant. <laughs> and then you are a man, my son. Wow. Because he came back and played the reserves. So one day before a reserve game, he's like, everyone sit down, we're going to read you something. He was obviously playing the reserves. Got, gets his poem. That's amazing, that. Unbelievable. Somebody skinnered. Um, some, uh, that's the poem. Do- if it's called. And it's, if you can walk with the common touch. If you can be a king or queen, but still walk with the co- common touch. Oh. Then you are a man, my son. <laughs> that's quality. And we were all like, yes, <laughs> all <nice." laughs> <laughs> what a guy, man. Uh, Dundee, bounce back. Great result. By the way, oh. left Griffiths and Cummins on the bench. Oh. Good decision. Which isn't easy to do, but obviously after the 5 0, he thought changes needed to be to be made. So credit to him for that. Yep. I, so it's a brave decision. Yeah. It? I mean, it's a brave decision, but sometimes you need to do that after the result they got. So no good on him. But yeah. it's saying here, surprise, but there's not much between the teams. No, no, nah. so it's not that nah, big nah, a surprise. No, nah, not at all. It's, I mean, again, to get a scud in a five 0 at home is, uh, and then before that, you think if you take that result out, of it, it's a draw against Hearts and it's a win against Aberdeen, an absolute doing against Ross County at home, which is never you're always going to get a bit of a bit of criticism for, and then another big result of the weekend. So they're in actually a decent bit of form, and they've, they've managed to get themselves to the bottom of that table as well, which is uh, really pleasing for James. Mm. Sit Mirren on a wee bit of a, a mystery there now. I think they'd won three in the bounce, hadn't they? Aye, it's like the, the consistency levels are a wee bit up and down. But that's what you're going to get with players oh, no, that I, thought, I, just, I, just thought, I just think like one in three in the bounce, you think coming off a 5 0 defeat, you think Sit Mirren would be favourites, but fair nah, play. Aye, hours, but, yeah. um, but no, it makes it like it's, it's interesting now from like third right down to fifth and then from fifth down to whatever. There's a, there's Who finishes third? Who oh. finishes third hearts? Do you think so? Yeah, who do you think? I don't know, I think, I, I'm going to say this, right, but... I'm oh, no could up, be good. I'm not licking up their arses, but Aberdeen's going to say... Fucking, <laughs> Aberdeen's going to come there, aren't I? 
I, I just feel like I feel like play for play think Aberdeen have got better uh, players I think they've that. got a good I, no? think, I just think they needed to get their shit together and I think they're starting to get there and I think they could potentially go on a run where they beat all the teams run about them still probably struggle against maybe like your Celtics and Rangers but because Hibs for me what's happened to them like, they've had players back there it's the front three the front three is no being I mean they're winning games at the start of the season the front right. three is excellent uh, they're always going to go through that wee spell where they're, <clears throat> where they're not quite as ruthless going mm. forward I mean that was I think that was the difference in the early part of the season the front three is really really strong uh, Nisbet's not scoring as many goals now yeah. uh, I mean Boyle's a wonderful player a threat yeah. to any team so uh, it's just no they're just they're just missing something at the moment I said on the Cooping Show though, I feel for Jack Ross you mm -hmm. think he finished third last year chance yeah. to kick on Aberdeen and Hart's going out signing you for me yeah. in, the, in the window okay. I'll, I, I actually wrote it down Jack Ross signings Paul McGinn St Man, Gorgic Hamilton Doyle Hayes St Man. Boyle Dundee McGuinness uh, Kevin Man. Nisbet Dunferman McGuinness St Man. so it's not like he's wow. going and getting guys yeah. established players where we said that, Aberdeen are going to sign Scott Brown Declan Gallagher Hearts are going to sign the boy Woodburn for Liverpool on Hibs I feel for Jack Ross a wee bit on Hibs they brought in that like American Brilliant owner stars, eh? the American owner with all the money but they're not spending any so what is what is the what's the goal what's the remit up there especially when you've done so well last year Aye. to have a chance to you go you need to build on that side didn't you yeah like, but I still think they'll, they'll finish third who Hibs? yeah they've been there and done it what about you Simon? Hibs, uh, Hearts Hearts I think Hearts scored the thing, I think the interesting score. thing will be come January because I think I think potentially Hearts could go out and get a couple of players I think Aberdeen might go out and get a couple of players do Hibs I think Hibs need to go out and get some players so it'll be interesting to see what the transfer window brings up, but the problem is it's budgets. It's like when you, like you say, Kenny stepping into maybe a manager job, and somebody says to you, "This is what you've got. Go and get, go and get." You know, that's it's it. hard, very, mm. very hard. That's it. But listen, Hibs are Hibs are, are, are able to compete with, with Hearts and Aberdeen budget wise. No, there's no doubt about it. Will uh, they be similar? I would they? imagine so. I don't Aye. think the Hibs will be too far. Listen, it might not be the same, but you might be looking. At, I don't know. I don't even know numbers. A couple of hundred grand here or there. I'm not yeah. sure, but it's. Uh, Hibs or Tibbs should be able to compete. Size that club, everything they've got in place there. They're just going through a poor run at the moment. Finishing third last year for the wonderful season. Probably should have won something last year. Uh, definitely would have been looking to build on it. Uh, but no, it's the last four games have been poor. Yeah. Tam Courts has done the pedestrian in the first half. Did he? Tam, yes. looked, Tam looked a shadow of his, of his former self on that. What were his facts when he looked if they had much uh, uh, nah, He watched the game, Zand, like, you're going to get to Zander time. Clark was brilliant, wasn't he? That, that was the incredible. difference. Zander Clark, some of the saves he made were incredible. By the way, yeah. you say some of the, in the word, by the way, Zander, he was outstanding. They've got his score. Yeah. Kenny, that's exactly They've what I watched score. it last night. I'm They've thinking some of the score. headers and that, you've got to be put in the one. Was it, was it, was it, you don't give him a chance. Paul had the chance and he had it. Yeah, six yards. You want If you miss chances like that, you're, you're not going to win games of football. No, you know, like, you can't create these types of chances because these are big moments. Goals change games. If you get a goal, it gives, it changes the whole kind of momentum of the game. And if you miss it, and they, they get the momentum for the save, and you see the way the St. Johnston players are celebrating yeah. after some of the saves, they're the ones that have got the momentum for it. You know, like great saves and Brawling Zander was outstanding, but you've got to score these chances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could Zander Clark go higher? Could he yeah. play? Yeah. Um, he could go higher, I, I like him. <laughs> I, I like, like him. I think it, for a goalkeeper, he's got size, uh, his distribution is decent. Terrible beard. He can make a save. Yep. I was golfing him. He's not the best golfer. I'm golfing oh, him a couple of weeks yeah. back. I uh, pumped him at golf, so he's, he needs to improve on that. But no, good good keeper. Big size about him. And obviously, he's playing well. I never knew actually I was speaking. He's been at St Johnston right, right through. You know, he's he's been there a long, oh, long time. He, you know, so it might be time uh, that. This may be best for him for his career, maybe try something different. But listen, he's St Johnston number one, playing well. I know he's been in an international setup as well. So, no, nah, it was uh, a big day for him there. Obviously, played his part in that result. But what a finish for <laughs> your wee lookalike, Ali Crawford, mate. Week, he's got that quality, Ali, Ali Crawford, Crawford yeah, didn't he? Player. Good finisher. Very much so. Uh, somebody that can break the lines. Um, break, wait, so, he breaks lines, plays number 10. Yeah. Is it not somebody breaking the lines to play at him? I'll be like, Rogic. I mean, you're number 10. Oh, so he receives it between the lines, you mean? He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not having it, he's breaking them. He receives it. But then finish wise. <laughs> I love the finish, but finish wise, he's just talking. He's just talking. He's just talking. He's just talking. Picked his spot all and day. And then you go. The only bad note against your career was the Puma Kings as well. And you don't like the Puma Kings? Oh, you're right. I get the Puma Kings. My first set of boots, Sunderland said the kit man, I need new boots, mate. Bad pair of boots. Puma Kings. So having them big. King SLs, no? Big. Puma Gas Coins, no? Nah, that was, that was uh, Puma, what the year was that? Do you mean? remember the night temples, Kenny? I talked about this in the show. You know the night temples with the, the fold-over tongue and the big... Aye. The, 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 these two can't remember them. 
No, I wouldn't have never fucking put it on the fold over. Hey, <laughs> mate, Rab Douglas specials. <laughs> Rab Douglas had done all the tempos with the fold over time. Ah, you wouldn't have done it. No, I was a Rab Douglas special, mate. With the goal kicks, remember? I remember the tempos, that, yeah. Yeah. Horrible. I used to clean you, mate. I used to clean you, but you're pure. No. Is that why they were always rubbish? I know you made me so I was a extra heavy. I'm a good deal cleaner, are you? I was, I was brilliant, by, I was yeah. the best boot boy ever. I was a good deal cleaner. I didn't ask me. I had Big Yogi. Yogi I had Big Yogi when he came in and Gordon Hunter. When I brought the Pat McGinley as well, it's points as well. I mean, I buffed them up for fun. Big Yogi, uh, yeah, if you could. Aye, he's always looked after us. Yogi's a brilliant. brilliant I love to have, aye. Polish them, put the polish brush down, get a clean brush, shine them. Oh. You did that? That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, standard, standard, that's, that's standard, that's standard. Did you have a scarifier for the bottom? A brush, the wire brush? Aye, you put it in hot water. We used a toothbrush, mate. We used a toothbrush. Why used a toothbrush? No, never. Did you? I love doing the job. Oh, yeah. Aye, Aye, amazing. Amazing, mate, it's character ball, you know, it's mess now. It's, it's, for me, it's mess. I can't date now. Do they, still, do, they, do they clean boots now? No. no. I think Jazz has brought it back to Dundee. I think they are allowed to. I think you're not allowed to. We should put that out. It was the... It was getting to Christmas and the end of the season when you got your wee bonus from your player. We had a brilliant one with that when we had Lee Power. Was uh, you know what I mean? Lee, Lee Power was chairman at Swindon. That's right, correct. So he was he was he was always into everything. So it's no surprise he's been a coach, a manager, a player. He's a chairman. So we had him and uh, Tam McManister on his boots. So he says, right, I'm going to give you a hundred quid. All oh, us boys are raging. Oh, yeah. Lee's going, baby, you going to put it on a horse. So on the Friday afternoon oh, yeah. before Christmas, we got the hundred quid. Tam had to go and put it on a horse to win. No, to say it lost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it lost. No. Did he, I want to know. Did he, did he bet a favourite? Uh, I don't know. I can't. He probably did favourite backer, but it Tam's was. Uh, a, Tam's a worse gambler than me. It was. Uh, it was good. It was good. But so all the boys, eight, eight of the yeah, staff, were all into lab. But it's thinking, right? Maybe we got a wee drink off Tam if we're going on Christmas night. Yeah. Yeah, nah, lost. Maybe lost his cash. Who did you do? Mother. Who that? Who's, oh, sorry. Um, who did I do again? I think I've done Paul Quinn, coach. Oh, he's, he's a bit of a screwball, isn't he, coach? Aye, uh-huh. I'm sure I've done. Get it if you could. Aye, he's brilliant, actually. But some boys didn't get in. No. Some boys, actually, I'm sure, used to do deal or no deal with yours. You ever remember that, no? No. But deal or no deal at Christmas, so you could win a pound or win two and a half or something. I can't remember. Shite story, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, we never got in, sell it. We didn't get that much. I've Gavin McCann and the goalkeeping coach. Goalkeeping coach. Gavin McCann, nice football player. Gavin McCann, nice football player. Gavin McCann, McCann, McCann said to me, I'm not getting any money. I said, I'm just going to take you out for a Saturday, an day Saturday or Sunday session. I was like, that's fucking perfect. So and just you and him? Just with me, him, Kev Kilbar and a couple of other boys went out on an day and he just paid for every drink. Oh, yeah. And you're on like 50 quid a week. That's that's massive. But we never got money to say, like, I went to the kit, like Clarke and Angie, right. you know, they took all the, we never got a penny, man. Mate, Lenny used to take about 18 pair of boots to a game. Do you remember that? Yeah. Mate, honestly, Why? Never, I don't know. That was one pair. Always. It was odd boots at <laughs> one pair. One pair for training, one pair for games. Well, sorry, one pair for training, same player for games. I, am. I, was I always think that when players, yeah, yeah. See, when players always obviously get new boots every day. I always found that, that it took you a few weeks to get them really settled in. You know, I think I got through a season with one pair, <laughs> one year. Did you? Training and games. I remember every the year. same. I used to, Tommy Sorensen would be the goalkeeper. Denmark number one at the time and he would be sponsored by Nike and he was the only one that was fucking size 12 and he'd do all this Nike stuff and he says Kevin you need some boots I said I fucking love some boots Tommy and he would give me the and they would last me the full year mm. they were the best days of your fucking life see the boot room see the buzz oh, when you got a pair of boots off a first team player it was aye. unbelievable wasn't it? going back and showing your pals and that you know my suit that Sunderland used to sell all the fake wash bags oh, did he? aye yeah you've got them in jail brilliant <laughs> <laughs> right last week Billy Gilmore's no starting for Norwich yeah what are we going to do with him? I don't get that. Their, their position, manager one looks like a porn director. Yeah. Is he in the position, that, he's, he's the the position that Nathan Patterson could be in, potentially? Do you know, like, you know what, he's no... Do you know what, no playing or sitting back and no doing nothing? Mm. He's, uh, he's no because is there anybody in front of him that should really be in front? Again, I don't ah. know. And there's different questions. Like he played, he played, he played in the one and then it maybe son, it's Slaney saying about maybe just changing things up a wee bit. They want to play and they want to, and you could watch the way they wanted to play. And me, Billy, that suits him down to the ground. With the greatest of respect, he's no passing it to Jorginho or, or Kovacic or, yeah. you know, up front of Lukaku or whatever. It's a, it's a different level of player, you know. So uh, it's a hard one for him. Kenny's that, a good player. No, a brilliant player, Kenny mm-hmm. is, but Kenny's obviously playing. Billy plays for Scotland, Kenny's on the bench for Scotland, so Kenny plays for Norwich, Billy's on the bench for Norwich. The manager said a weird thing a couple of weeks ago, he was like, we're not here to make Billy Gilmore a better player, we're not here to coach him. 
Who said that? No, I didn't. He said that. Didn't Couldn't he? have said that because no. that's the full reason he won't have went there. <laughs> or they see, see Brandon Williams as well. See, see Chelsea. Chelsea hundred percent will have looked at where he goes. They're not just going to say right, you can go alone. You can go alone to anybody. Yeah. They're going to have looked at right. Who's what team can he go to that's going to help him develop yeah. and be better when he comes back here? So again, is that not? I think the way they play, I. But how much of the ball are they going to have? How mm. much are they going to need them to do that side of the game? But listen, it's a good learning, a good learning Lone experience for them. Old but Peter Head for that boy. I, mean, I think one moves are dangerous, by the way, and they can be very good. But sometimes I think, mate, see when things don't go too well. Sometimes Mario goes, well, he's not going to be here next season. season. So I'm going to play main players. I think sometimes you'd be a bit careful with them. Mm. I'm trying to think of examples. I'm sure it wouldn't surprise me to be fair if he ends up back. In, at Christmas yeah, or January, January. But and then, back you know, again, just I don't know. Chelsea. I don't know what what again. It depends what this experience has done with him. If they thought, well, they I want to do that, and potentially no play, or with a rather potentially no play here and yeah. be involved here, you know. So it'll have a it'll have a few decisions that we might make. Uh, aye, but hopefully again, Mount went to Derby in the Championship, didn't they? They were up yep. the top of the league. Yep. Maybe that would have been a wee a bit a better right. going to a Championship team who were winning. Mistakes. Aye, they're getting battered every week. No, it's a, it's a good point. Sorry. But I always think see now. Does then the Chelsea manager look, well, if he's not playing for Norwich, he's not going to come play at Chelsea? No, I don't think so. No, like because no. He's, no, he's been sent out to Norwich to try and gain more match day experience and, and, and learn more about the game. It might have the opposite effect where you go out and loan and at Disney work for you, didn't enjoy it, you think to yourself, right, I'm going to get back to my, my parent club here and I might try a wee bit even harder and wait for an opportunity. He might get back to Chelsea at Christmas time. Somebody gets injured before you know it, he's back in the team and away you yeah. go and you forget all about it. Fit, well, he was in squads, wasn't it? He was in yeah. the squad. Ah, he was as if he was miles yeah. away from the team. Nah. He was just, they just think at his age, at his age, he needs to be playing games. Yeah. Like he's Scotland's big player. You know, and see the thing is that you say that about his, his loans, but just watch how he comes into these international ah, games. Right. You know, he goes in and he's, I don't know if there's been a game he's not been the MOM. Mm. Since he's got, he just goes in and he's just a different, t- a different type of player. He controls the game, he dictates the tempo. Everyone you're saying about we demo, about doing the right things, picking the weights he passed, decision making, we bill is nailed on. Yeah. Nailed on for it. Sometimes a bad loan move is not the worst thing. I've interviewed loads of boys who said they went on loan first time and, and I actually gave them a kick up my ass and thinking, right, when I need to go back here and mm-hmm. work yeah. even harder. Yeah, Did you have a training? Aye. Was in, uh, we got him. Oh, that was you that said he'd play for aye. Barcelona? Aye. He's that type of player. That's the type of player he is. But he's, uh, aye, he trained with us and you know, he never, he just, he's just at that level. He's, yeah. His decision making, his way to pass, his execution of the pass, that's always been top level. You know, he trained with us, he was like, he's just like one of the boys and he's 15. He's a constant kid. Aye, ah, brilliant. My mate, like, he's one of these, he's just one of these boys, you just know he's, got, he's going to go and he's, he's going to have, he's going Aye. to be successful because he works it out, his mentality is right. You know, he's, he's not the biggest, mm. you know, so, but, so he's understood he's had to work on that side, physical, fitness wise, he needs to be spawn if he's going to play in the Premier League, does it? First in the training ground goes and does it. His quality is there for all to see. Like some of the games you've seen him playing. The biggest thing I can say about him is that in the game, see, because he's not been a regular, the fact that he can put the performances on that he does when he the, does get a yeah, chance yeah, right. t- tells you where he's at, mm-hmm. tells you where his, 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 his head's at mm. because he just goes in. He's no one, ah, I'm no good. By the way, boys, I'm going to be in this team and then I'm going to boot the team because I've not played for six weeks now and get one game. And what? No, no, this is my chance. Yeah. This is my game. I need to go and be the best player. By the way, a lot of the times he has been. Yeah. MOMs, and it's no, by the way, he's not getting the MOM and, uh, just because he's a young kid. He's, he's 20 years old now. He's not 16, 17. He's yeah. 20 year old. So, uh, I think mean, he's 21 now. He should be playing that. Like, like, so, he comes in and he just gets a, so he's not just getting it just because he's a young kid coming through. He's coming through, he's getting the MOMs because of his performances he's putting on. Yeah, all right. Did you take him at Rangers? Aye. Good. Aye. I think, uh, I mean, Rangers have got a lot of really, really good midfielders, but, you're looking at who could replace a Steve Davis. Davis yeah. There's somebody who can control, somebody who understands the game, somebody whose positioning's right, who makes the right calls all the time. They could be, again, he's at Chelsea, he's at a wonderful football club, but for me, it's uh, a lone move up here wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been a bad one. I don't ask him, did I see speculation that maybe when I was across in Australia, but ah, Rangers, look at the midfield, you've got Rebo's, Arfield's, Davis's, Jack's, uh, 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 Kamara's, wow. really, really strong in there. But as a succession to maybe Dave again, I don't know what Dave wants. Is he going to stay for a couple of years, a year? Is what's he going to do? He's definitely that ilk of that player. That, uh, if he, you, can play if he's just to get in the Chelsea team regularly now at twenty, when does he get in the Chelsea team mm-hmm. regularly? That would be my question. 
I know, but the two midfielders that are playing ahead them were the two, I think they were two midfielders a year in FIFA, do you know what I mean? So No, I know, I know, I, I, I get that and I yeah. can totally understand why he's not in. Yeah. But the point I, I is, think. you as a, an individual in a footballer trying to have a career and a pathway to being where you think you could be, how does he then map out? Is he can't that. Right, I'm not going to get this at Chelsea. Where, where do I go? So he's went to Norwich. Will another top side pick him up? Does he go to like a West Ham or does he go to an Everton or something like that to build his... You know what, I'm just, mm. just curious. Because like, if he was 16 now or 17 and loan at Norwich, I can understand he's young, he'll go back to Chelsea and learn a wee bit more. But like Kenny says, at 20, he ne- probably needs to be playing every week because... That, that's the level he's at. Yeah. He, he can't he's sit and keep waiting for somebody else to make a decision on whether he's going to be good enough for them or you good know, enough for a, us. You know, it's an interesting one, though, because these, these, there's, there's so many players, even like, like there's a lot of players even older than Billy, that still do float about these big clubs that maybe have like, like Hudson O'Doy. Mm-hmm. He's older than Billy. You know, he's, he must be a couple of years older than him. And he's, he's still at Chelsea and he's never, ever been a regular, but... He's always talked about, I mean, was it Bayern Munich came in for yeah, him Bayern last year, Munich, you know, right. so, but, it, listen, we, we Billy will have a, a, a wonderful career, I have absolutely no doubt about it, whether it's not Chelsea, it'll be somewhere else, yep. because he's, he's driven, he's committed, he's talented, that's for sure, so he will go on and, and he'll, he'll be a success wherever he ends up. Yeah, every podcast you did, is two, about two and a half hours. Well, that's not my fault today, <laughs> but by the way, it's not my fault today. Love this cheek, that's the one yeah. he's got in. Aye, that was the other one, yeah. aye. Yeah. Yeah. Last time Jeff Stern, sexy bastards leaving, Joy at Soccer started 25 years, supposedly to take the done filming just. God, absolutely good. You can't call it Jeff and the boys anyway. <laughs> I love it. Watching Jeff and the boys on the Saturday, that's, that's, gonna be that. that's why he's Fairman. gone. I could be a role for you, by the way. No, I couldn't. Oh, do that. that is. Would you buckle? Would you, you buckle? No, no I, I would buckle, but I couldn't. I could be the one of the guys that they go to. Couldn't it be there? In the games. You could be, you'd be no, proud no, of that. No, no. Mate, see who ever takes that. They're, they're, they're fucked. fucked. They're ah, they're, it's like taking the Man United job uh, after Alex Ferguson. Ah, I'd have no chance. I can they, see they why should he's scrap chucking that it. for a year, shouldn't they? Take, take that after a couple he's, of years. I can see why he's chucking it. The banter's not the same, isn't it? No, nah, I think that's why he's chucking it. Different, nah, it's a different panel now. But you and him, two favourites for the filming jobs. You're up against Jeff. Me and Jeff. Many year old in the car park one. He's getting a bit old now, Jeff. Like. Uh, you can take him, can you? That's us, boys. Right, Super I'm going to leave up to you two. Who's what next week? Andy or Kenny? Kenny. It's a no-brainer, Kenny. Where is Andy? Today? Sad to see him. Cop been sent off now. He's been fired. <laughs> Cop twenty six. Doing Cop twenty six. He was worried about the safety. He kept going about the safety measures. I was in that. Steve, no, even Joe. I was in. We were having banter on that. He's like, "Hey, but seriously, man, what the fuck?" He's not worried about the Cop twenty six. Try to enjoy our pint. Who said that? Andy. Andy. Jamie Andy. And he was arguing with who was it? He was arguing with one of the stewards, wasn't it? One of the security guards. You need to see, I know, I know he's took him out yesterday and stuff, but he's need to take him out more. He needs to get the house. Aye, he definitely does he need does. to get the house, man. Sits on that computer too. Aye, much playing too. Twitch with fucking uh, voicey of it. I want a heart cell, you can. Playing Twitch. That's Twitch. 50 quid he gets for coming on here, so he's going to miss that another year. Nah. <laughs> Spurs are an embarrassment. A representation, I always say, you're right, not going to say. Gone. Aye, Sang Swarman. Is he? Aye. He was never a Spurs manager, was he? Yeah. He was never a Spurs manager. Wow. Gone this morning. A goalie, mate. A goalie as well. A goalie, Never goalie. sure about yeah. goalies being managers here. Ah, well, there's a few. Well, listen, he's done a good job at Rolls. You can't, you can't he knock that. <laughs> Clop this. <laughs> He's a right back, isn't he, Clop? Andy Gibble. <laughs> <laughs> Who will get that? Jeff, Jeff Stellan. Conny's Con- 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 trying to pick over Dun. Oh, oh, yeah, Jeff Stellan, isn't it? No, I suppose it Conny is. is it Who, Who will get that? Or Lenny, Con- isn't it? Conny or Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> Conny's a man. I can't believe that any club doesn't go for Conny, mate. Wins everywhere yeah. he goes. It will be in. Start our game with But again, man, you missing out on Conte, yeah. man. Yeah, no. He had John Stones not play the game this season. Injured. No, he's not. Been on the bench after the game. Eh? Best set and half at Euros. <laughs> Think so. Better than that. Kaylini. And been, no, better than it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say Stones is better. <laughs> I think it. <laughs> no way. I'm <laughs> Stones, do you? Oh, he's decent. Aye, but yeah. he's obviously went through that. Oh, you did, you've not heard this. Who would you write? If you're a manager, who but it's a bad time. Ask no, no, us. no. Just, come on, sorry. Just let the guy. <laughs> it's a bad answer. time. Ask us. Wait, it's like, just let him ask. Who, if you're a manager, and you can. By the way, somebody said, "Well, I need to remind what he's just been." Somebody says, "Best centre back in the league." Who? Yeah. Somebody just said that there. No, I said he's he best centre back at the Euros. Oh, at the Euros, right? No, okay. So if you're a manager and the board company say we've not got a centre half, we can only pick one of these two: Rudiger or Stones. And the Man City oh. team. And the Man City. No, 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 no. You're the manager. Who do you want to take? It's a, it's a tough one, that. It does. It does matter what team we're. Yeah. Well, you want to play for the back? The parts who were. You want to play for the back? The parts who You said earlier you want to play. Absolutely. So you want Johnstones? No, no, but here's side. I'm not joking. Do you know Rudiger's known at Chelsea? But he's not a bad player, by the way. I know. Rudiger's not, 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 not a bad player. He drives through the whole team. You know, breaks lines. Do I mean breaks the lines? I'm not the cop. Right.